You are now listening to the Save Cast, the number one old school RuneScape podcast featuring guests from all across Gelenor. To support this podcast, visit the Patreon link in the description. All right, welcome to the Save Cast number 122 with Potato Hime and Sid. How you guys both doing? Doing well. Pretty good. Um, so I just, I gotta say this, it's potato hime, cause that is, correct me if I'm wrong, is that Japanese for queen? Or yeah, Japanese for princess, Oh, yeah. princess, that was it, princess. What's the word for queen? Do you know that? I have no idea. I was like 14 <laughs> and very into anime. Still am, but very into anime. And, uh, that's how this name was created. I, okay, I, we'll just go into it. So what's the potato about? Oh, I just really like potatoes. I don't know <laughs> what to tell you. <laughs> no, I, I used to actually have a different username. Um, and then I was playing this video game and suddenly it was taken. So I was like, shit, I need to figure out something else. And I was in a, in a TeamSpeak call with my cousin. And he's like, just make a name already. Like, we're playing this game. So I was like, oh, what do I like? Potatoes. I just had potatoes for dinner. <laughs> and then I, I just put that together. I love so, it. All right. I kind of stuck, stuck to it. <laughs> Sid Orlando, where did that come from? Um, so that is a name of a video game character from the Final Fantasy series. There's like a Sid in every single game. And Sid Orlando is the name of one of the more broken characters. And it's from the Final Fantasy Tactics video game mm. on the PlayStation 1. So, like, when you get him, he's already a higher level. He has skills that no one else can learn in the game. It's just, like, a very, very dumb character <laughs> that people can absolutely easily abuse. Okay. So, yeah, I'm a little bit of a final fantasy fanboy with yeah tattoos i enjoy jrpgs and, stu and stuff a lot so okay i just have to ask this because of the jrpgs did you ever play legend of dragoon i love legend of dragoon I, it is I, one of my favorites okay that's good to know because i feel like there was a feud between um final fantasy and legend of dragoon like if you liked one you couldn't like the other They're or both so good that you know what that's actually really nice to hear because i had only barely played final fantasy i think it was actually tactics just barely but it was just because my friend brought it over and i just never really got fully into it i was definitely a legend of dragoon kid that makes sense the action timing was pretty revolutionary in the game for the time it was very much i think the only game that had done it similar before was super mario rpg on the super nintendo as far as like timing actions with an art with a JRPG system in order to do additional damage on a turn based system in general. Mm. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 it was revolutionary. It was like the coolest thing ever. So good. Yeah. It's kind of funny because now that I think about it, I wouldn't necessarily call that rhythm necessarily like a kind of like a rhythm aspect to the game. I guess it kind of is, but those. I don't know. There's something about that sort of rhythmic play style that I just love. I love Legend of Dragoon. I love Guitar Hero. I love like RuneScape, I guess, is rhythmic as well with the tick system. And just something about it just hooks me. I don't know what it is. Back when I was young and fit, I was a Dance Dance Revolution nerd. Oh, really? So I was that annoying, super skinny kid. <laughs> like, this is 20 years ago at this point. But... Most of my high school was we would go to the arcade, me and my friends, after high school every day. And we'd go play DDR and then get Taco Bell. Holy. And that would be the day. Sounds uh, like we should uh, request the DDR variety yes. stream for you then. Yes. Dear God, no. I am so unfit now. <laughs> <laughs> we got to bring it back. Fit man mode. <laughs> oh, God. I'm a maybe. We'll see. That's very cool. Okay, so... I am very excited to talk to both of you. I've been watching both of your guys' streams for, I don't even know how long. Like, I literally want to say years, but I genuinely don't know how long. I think, I want to say I started watching Sid just right before I started watching you, Potato. And 
Um, I I literally don't know the time frames, but both just the most wholesome individuals and streamers. And uh, <laughs> it's like you guys, I, I don't know why this has been something I've talked with other guests about. It's like the generations of Twitch streamers. Like, I don't know exactly where you guys fall into the generation of Twitch streamers, but it was like, you know, Bodie and Foe and MMORPG were like the, the grandfathers kind of. And then there was like Jace, Zulu and Rig and Dad. That was like another generation. And then like, I feel like me and like a bunch of other guys, like a cold one and stuff were like another generation. Coxie, it's Will kind of were in that little segment and then like zoe pan i don't know i'm like literally calling out like streamers like those are like the generations but it feels like that do you guys like have that sort of in, in your guys' yeah, head as well absolutely um at least for me and like i'm nowhere near the category of like defy or jake or zoe like jake c um absolutely phenomenal streamers but i think, I think we yeah. all started around the same time I think Patel, yeah. you were a little bit later, maybe a few months. I think we're around the same Are amount we? of time, two, three years, something like that. Mine's um, just about to hit three years next month. Yeah, okay. I'm hitting yeah. like three years in, in like October ish. Okay. So. Yeah. That sounds about right. Okay. So you guys are about in like that two and a half, three year gap. Who, so is, what's the, the newest generation? Like, what do you guys consider that, like, streamers wise? Ooh. No. That's an interesting. It's like, one. has that formed yet? I feel like it always forms like a year after it happens, and then we we start to gather the data. As mm, for me, as far as the people who I see who are like a little bit more popular nowadays, and maybe this is my own bias, but I see like uh, a lot of like Schmacko doing UIM content, who's the newer streamer. Um, he's like a year in. But I don't know the generation. I don't know what the generation after me would be. It might. I'm be, also really, uh, really impressed with um, Scotizo. Oh mm -hmm. yeah, yep. Max is. Yeah. Yeah. Max is definitely on the newer end, but she's yeah great. Yeah, well, I guess we'll kind of figure it out as the months go by. Kind of like figure out that next generation. Not like any of us matters. It just in my head, I categorize it a little bit better. I can start like define I, not like it's a good thing to just define people based <laughs> off of their generation but <laughs> just just sitting, like, people into groups pokemon. and then judge them <laughs> yeah see so like a pokemon list gen one gen two three I, starters I, on each generation genuinely that's a brilliant <laughs> idea like that would actually be really cool to like go back and just see like the active streamers and like categorize them into generations like that <laughs> um but yeah it's really cool to always just see like the new group of uh, streamers coming in and then it just makes you feel old because you guys I mean you're both what rounding up on three years you guys said yeah yeah so it probably doesn't feel like that at all it probably feels like you just started too huh oh yeah for sure oh yeah <laughs> it just flies by and then all of a sudden you're the old man because I'm I have just hit four and a half years and it's like holy crap like this feels like I started all of this yesterday still so it it, it really does feel like that and I remember like when I hit 10 average viewers and I was like, holy fuck, 10 people are watching me. This is insane. And then I was like, partner is like not achievable <laughs> in my head at that point. That's like insane. That's for the big streamers, you know, yep. in my head. And then suddenly I have a check mark. Yeah. Oh, so that's, isn't it, isn't it an amazing feeling? You're both Twitch partners oh, now. Yeah. And you guys really worked for it, too. You guys definitely put in, like, you were grinding. And it really does feel that way. It feels like you hit the 10 viewers. And this is not everyone's journey, but it was definitely mine. I remember hitting double digits. And like, holy, like, that took it took months to hit, like, consistent double digits. And then... I think, uh, I think the first um, six months of streaming, it was... How do I word this? Like, it, it took a while to even get that double digit, but then it's like starting to rocket more. It's like those first like 10, 20 average takes way longer, especially when you're not really known from before. It's yeah. totally true. And I think one of the problems is this idea that viewers have in their mind where they, f 
I feel like viewers kind of feel a little bit more uncomfortable when there's fewer people in a chat, which is just like the worst thing ever because you would hope it would be the opposite where people would actually want to be in like a small stream. But it's kind of like that obligation where as soon as you start talking, then the streamer engages with you. And then as a viewer, you're like, okay, I kind of got to go or like I kind of want to lurk, but I can't be like disrespectful or rude. So it's this awkward thing where you... And this is my problem is like I'll go into a small stream and like I want to interact, but I only really got like 10 minutes. And so I'll kind of feel like, do I even start talking? And in a more active stream, like 30, 40 viewers, it's way easier to just pop in, say hi, and then you can just leave whenever and you don't feel that pressure to just be there. So yeah, that's I kind I'm of a story about that, actually. Um, so I'm I'm a person who really likes to watch smaller streamers. Um, because I really like talking to people and this is going to sound really selfish, but if I pop into a stream with two viewers, I'm going to have the streamer to myself and have a conversation. Um, so I, I really like doing things like that because I think it's fun, um, just to see different people's viewpoints on things. But there has been a few times where it's been very awkward, um, I went into a streamer's chat once and had a very nice conversation and... Then I said, I have to go, I have stuff to do. And the streamer basically started begging me to stay. <laughs> no, um, no. Um, saying, oh no, you're the only one who popped by the last hour, please don't leave me. And I was like, uh, I'm sorry, I have to go. And I never returned, um, so I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, wh that is that was a big blunder by the streamer. What you don't That's say that? So tragic. <laughs> I feel bad for the person, honestly. Because yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. bad. That's really bad. I mean, I've definitely had, I've definitely visited smaller streamers, and I've actually played around with like removing my check mark so I don't show as like a streamer who's just got this verified check mark and sometimes i have like way worse interactions whereas i feel like it shouldn't necessarily give me any sort of respect because at the end of the day i'm lucky to have the platform that i do albeit not large but for some reason when i have my check mark on in a chat people are much more willing to not write off anything. And then I guess the best thing that I've experienced is having a check mark off and someone just treating me like their best friend and it felt great. Aww. And then I went to immediately someone else and I had my check mark off and like I said hi and I just got immediately egoed. <laughs> like the, top, the response before me got read. My response of, hi, how's the stream been so far? Nothing. And I'm like, damn, it really do be like that. All right. It really kind of is, which is which is horrible. But that's literally just like human nature. You see it. You see it like, uh, quote unquote, famous person. And you just yeah. feel and even as a stream, like I am literally a partnered streamer and I'll see a random check mark that I've never seen the name of. And I'm instantly intrigued. I just want to know like what the person plays like I'm more. It, it's not even like it, I feel like it's almost like we can connect instantaneously. I can literally because you're a streamer that's like. Okay, we already have a bunch of similarities, so it's easier to connect with. But yeah. Um, yeah, let me ask you guys. So how was how is it having a check mark? And I guess this can maybe go out to those that are aspiring to get a check mark one day. I know <laughs> I know Ignoble Solid is one of those guys who just he just really wants that check mark so he can just go in those e-girl streams and just flex that he <laughs> has a check mark. But has it made a difference in in your chatting experiences having uh, a check mark? Uh, not really much, except for, you know, what we already talked to, that people usually respond very much quicker when they see the check mark. Um, but, uh, yeah, I unfortunately, think... in this day and age, the check mark doesn't really give much else, unfortunately. Um, uh, so, yeah, I but yeah, say... it's, 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 it's still cool to have like that badge that shows like, you know, you've done it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you've got yeah. to a certain achievement points 
I think for me, the badge means less than you did the suffering of a partner push. <laughs> because, uh, oh my god, the partner push is just the <sighs> worst. <laughs> Says Mr. Uh, uh, accepted on first try. <laughs> okay. Fair. That's okay. But that's no, only that's... because I have the community that I have and Twitch likes money. <laughs> <laughs> they're probably, they're, no, I don't a, know. It's a future achievement. Yeah, I don't know how their algorithm works. So it's probably going to be a little bit of a factor. Um, yeah. I, I will say, though, like, they're. Yeah, you get partner. It's an, an an incredible feeling, but at the end of the day, it's just okay. You're still a streamer, but now you don't have anything to look forward to. Like, there's Keep no going. like more <laughs> level progression. So it's like, okay, I've I've hit the end game, and this is just all it is, which is a little bit. I think it can be s similar to like maxing in old school, where you max. Are either of you maxed? Yeah, Maybe. I'm a max. No. Me. Okay. Yeah. As soon as you max, it's like, oh well shit like xp doesn't matter anymore and it just feels strange it's like huh and then you're just i kind of just playing. stood in my poh um, after i maxed for like a day and was like what now <laughs> yeah <laughs> shit <laughs> yeah you definitely have to have like goals afterward but i don't know with it's kind of nice though not having that pressure it's just like okay you've a you've accomplished something and now you know hopefully at twitch partner point you can you know just enjoy streaming for what it is and not have that unnecessary pressure and just kind of enjoy the streaming process yeah it's a go it's going back to your roots really where you're just like okay all right now i just need to keep building the community and make people happy mm -hmm. yeah so I why can't sorry no go you're, you're good why, why did you guys first start streaming and uh i guess we'll kind of just go into like your origin stories of like first starting old school or runescape in general and then why you decided to start streaming oh uh, i guess we'll start with you potato okay um so me as most people played runescape as a kid um so really enjoyed it back then but i was only free to play because my parents refused to pay for membership so i didn't really play that much and then um in high school um someone in my class uh, was like, old school RuneScape is back. And that was like two or three years after it came back. So I kind of I kind of started up again and I got immediately hooked. So um, I was um, grinding maybe unhealthy hours at that point, um, trying everything I hadn't tried as a kid. So I joined a clan. Uh, I joined a, a Norwegian clan, actually, because I was kind of tired of playing alone after like two years. And um, someone in that clan kept, like, nagging me to stream. They're like, Potato, you have a good account. You're close to max. Stream it. And I'm like, nah, that's stupid. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Why would I stream something, you know? Um, and they wouldn't shut the fuck up. So <laughs> I was like, okay, I'll do one stream. Just leave me alone, okay? I'll set it up. I'll go live on Twitch. Just, just leave me the fuck alone, okay? So I did that, and I even streamed in Norwegian, because I wasn't comfortable speaking English. Um, and I got affiliated, because I streamed for like a week or two or something, um, and I streamed apparently enough to get affiliated that month, because people in my clan were watching me. So I was very lucky with that. But then I stopped. I got affiliated, and then I just stopped. I was like, this isn't for me, this isn't fun. Um, yeah, this is never going to be a thing. And then two years later, I was like around COVID times, um, 2022, late 2022. Um, no, not 2020, 2020. Um, and um, I was like really bored. I was like, you know what? I still have OBS on my computer. Let me just fire it up and, you know, maybe I'll speak some English instead or something. And then people kind of just rolled in. <laughs> so, and then I kind of got hooked on that too. Very cool. So. So it's really like just being at home sort of and just rediscovering like, oh, maybe I could just stream. I feel like that was yeah. a lot of people. You, were, yeah. you guys were the COVID generation. I do forget that. That yeah. is true. All right. What about you, Sid? Um, so I played classic when I was younger. Uh, I would play in my like junior high library back when 
Classic was the only thing out. And so I remember it going to RuneScape 2 and played throughout, I would say, most of junior high and high school. I ended up being very, very wealthy because I have always had a knack for finances, I guess. And you had a more developed brain than all the eight-year-olds. <laughs> Helps a lot <laughs> in terms of being able to have a friend on one on the north side of uh, Varrock Bank on World One. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm at the smithing area on the south, and I'm selling obscure items for a lot of money, and he's buying those obscure items for a lot more money. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh my I, was, God. I was that person who merged a whole lot. I didn't ever, like, it was never a thing of, I'm going to remove myself my items from a trade window, but I absolutely abused markets. That is... Uh, that so going funny. on forums and being like, I will buy every single magic log that you guys can get. And I know eight people who are at magic logs right now on world 42 and they are all giving them to me and I'm merching all of them. That so. must have, that, those are truly the good old, if you were just a little bit older, like if I had been a little bit older, those would have been the glory days. There is an account out there that has some knowledge of my mom's credit card on a Juno.com email address that has dozens of P-Hat sets. <laughs> and I have tried to remember everything that I can about that account. Have you never been able to recover it? Never. Oh, oh no. man. I, yeah. I stopped playing the week that Summoning came out. I was like one of the first 10 people to 99 construction just because I had money to burn. Holy... It was it was a very yeah long time ago, and then when Cla or when RuneScape uh, when OSRS came out, I remember I was told by someone like a year after it came out, and I'm like, oh, that's that's fine. I'm enjoying Final Fantasy 14 right now, and then I just stopped playing, and I was focusing on finishing up college and school and stuff like that, and I didn't start looking into osrs until about late 2018 maybe mid 2018 and that's when i made my first account as far as starting streaming i don't remember what led me to start streaming because that was that was something i want to say one of my first mods probably pushed me i was really uh in like in the Roidy community and a little bit of the faux community. Um, and so I was, I luckily never had to push for the first like five to 10 people. I think I started my stream with like 10 people, which definitely helps a ton. And so that was really, really nice. And I remember just enjoying hanging out with people. And then I started playing music on stream and I was like, cool. I can just do this and streaming is basically playing the game and hanging out with friends and listening to music. And it's kind of been that ever since it's just more and more people. And I'm really lucky that people are uh, enjoying themselves, I guess. That's awesome to hear. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's cool. Like when it's just the roots of what Twitch was really like, built upon which is gaming and just community you know yeah so that's cool <clears throat> um so now that it's been you know two and a half three-ish years of streaming ha what what are your guys's i guess thoughts on streaming now compared to earlier on um and i guess there was a question i guess we'll just go into this right now um well, here, it, this is from Pseudoscape. He asks, and this is, he says for Sid, but I'm going to ask both of you. Um, how do you guys keep yourself motivated while streaming slash motivated to do a stream, even after, you know, three-ish years? I mean, for me, I just love it. It's what allows me, and so I'm kind of, I'm an introvert for the most part. 
but I love being an outrovert. So I don't know. I think someone's thrown around the term extra or er, uh, ambivert. And I guess that kind of nails it for me where I really, really enjoy having my time alone. But for me, streaming is what motivates me, which is interesting. Really so gives you energy. Yeah. So I feed off the energy from people around me in chat. And then I'm like, oh, that was a great stream. That was a great day. And now I just want to relax and lay down with my cats and my wife and just have like a nice rest of the evening or most of the time rest of the three to four to five AM morning. (laughs) So for me, I I'm lucky that the motivation itself is just uh, enjoying the stream. And then it's also my full-time job. So I'd feel a little bit obligated, but it's never something that I'm like, ah, now I have to stream. So that's cool. I guess I'm lucky when it comes to that. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, Potato? Yeah, for me, it's just, uh, I I just really enjoy playing this game. And I've kind of always been like a social person, but I will also say I'm I'm also introverted in in real life, at least. Um, I can be very social for like a period of time, and then I just kind of shut down and just need like some recharge time, I guess. So as as I said before, I just really like talking to people, like hence going into chats and stuff. And I, like my favorite thing is just like asking people, like, what have you done today? And then chat tells me about their day or their accounts or anything so i just really like to have this like little space or like, this little community where we can just be really really nerdy about whatever we enjoy you know doing um because i i keep bothering my coworkers um with the runescape i can see in my coworkers eye when i say dude did you know about this thing in runescape and he's just like oh, what now what now <laughs> so it's nice to have people with the same interests so. Yeah, yeah. That that is so true by the way. Like I forget <laughs> I forget how nice it is that when I stream RuneScape, my viewers in there are wanting to watch it. It's not like there's anybody that's in there that's like, oh, time to watch this guy play RuneScape. It's like we're all just total nerds, you know. We can just enjoy it for what it is and not have to, you know, apologize. Just There she goes again talking about takes. <laughs> all right. Yeah. I think <laughs> That's why Potato and I, our communities are like a pretty good Venn diagram, I would say. Oh yeah, Um, we overlap. We overlap a lot in our viewer base. And I think it's because we both love sharing and like viewer successes. Like every once in a while, I know I'll pop off with like, oh my God, I got this thing. It's amazing. I am so much more hyped when someone else gets something that's like not even half that good if they've been grinding for it oh my god that's the best feeling in the world to see someone else's success in chat and watching, I think um, same for yeah yeah watching the 5j get that enhanced seed that is probably t- <laughs> one of the top clips i've seen this year um, i was so the far. only person in the cg room so i'm that <laughs> account that runs up to him typing like 14 fucking messages a second <laughs> Dude, that, yeah, I was is, <laughs> that is such yeah. a painful grind. It's oh. going dry on that. Like, dude, it was painful for me, and I spooned that place so hard. Like, I got I two, t- I spooned two. <laughs> two seeds, two pets, 13 armor seeds, and like under 500. Potatoes, I think, the only one. So, I got my enhanced, I think, before potato, but potato got everything and six armor seeds out way faster than I did. I green logged. Um, I green logged the entire log at forty eight KC, and then That's I got my right. second enhanced at eighty eight, and then I finished before two hundred. <laughs> Holy armor shit! Yeah. yeah, I was like, I had an eleven KC <laughs> enhanced, and I was happy about that. And then I went several hundred dry for armor seeds, and I'm like, all right, it's fine. You guys saw, uh, heard of Seven, right? He, he was actually the guy that got banned in like the Coxie situation with the Toa glitch but he he was the the only reason i bring that up is just because if you had heard his name from anywhere else but he his iron man went 3400 dry for one enhanced seed 
Yeah. Holy shit. There's a person. There's a person in Jace's community who comes in my stream. His name is Buddy Swift. He just went like 3600 drive for it. Oh my god! And like he got his a couple weeks later. I mean, what if I got his two nights ago? Yeah. And then one of my viewers got his enhanced at like 1900 or 1900 KC, like 2700 KC between all his accounts. Oh my just, god! Like, just I horrifying. can't imagine the pain. Yeah, that is horrifying. I what? enjoy CG, but not that. No. Yeah, it's like it's fun when you actually kind of get some stuff, you know, here and there. That's what kind of makes content enjoyable. But when it's just you really need something and you can't get it, it's like inevitable you're going to start hating it. <laughs> um, I always get asked uh, why I'm still doing CG because uh, I, I still do CG, but it's just because it's the best money maker I have <laughs> on the account. And it's nice just so getting passive happen. shards too. I'm imagining. Yeah, yeah, put it into crystal armor. Mm -hmm. I need to go back to get more shards so I can start trying to get dragonstone armor pieces again. Oh, do you have any pieces yet? I have boots, and I got boots on like my twenty fourth opening. You know what's insane about that mm -hmm. grind is there are it's like a lot of mains have just you know just with a bill to spare. We'll just go do that grind real quick. Um, and Sherlockness, he did, I think he got his full set at like 8,000 keys. Oh, 8,000. Oh like we, I don't think we realize how incredibly rare that stuff is. I mean, each piece is one in 2,500. So if you yeah. just go like three times the rate of one piece, it's, it's over for you. And imagine going like eight times the rate of one piece. Like you just well, no. never <laughs> get it. Dude. Yeah. The, not, not realistic for most. yeah it's really not like there's there's certain grinds where if you go dry you're just never going to complete it that's yeah. i still ingrained in my mind i don't know if you guys ever messed around with the discord os bot where you could just like type plus kill you know oh yeah. thousand corp or whatever sure. i did um plus finish corp this is like years ago and i remember it took like forty seven thousand for an ellie oh, no. it was like almost 11 times or no it was like it was like 11 times rate oh, for God. an elliot i'm like dude that is actually a possibility like it probably won't happen at all like but that's a possibility <laughs> like There's that is a, horrifying you could be that 0.1 percent that everyone <laughs> wants to be until you're that guy <sighs> and i'm only missing an ellie from there so it's like just oh. that oh that grind's scary that's actually scary I mean, I think Potato and I have both been incredibly lucky with our accounts overall. We're both yeah. very spooned. Do you have any, like, dry <laughs> spells either of you guys have gone on? Um, not really. Uh, this UIM is, is insane RNG. Like, I'm, I'm seriously starting to become, a, like, a tinfoil hat person. Uh, <laughs> Like sitting here, like becoming one of those Reddit people who are like, content creators gets extra RNG. I swear it. I know it. I know a guy. Uh, so, uh, yeah. I, the only thing I've probably gone dry on that I actually haven't finished yet is the broken pickaxe from Volcanic Mine. Uh, mm. And that one takes an insane long time, actually. Um, like, to, just to get one of those ore packs uh, is, is stupid. I've been in there for like 60 hours and nothing. Oh, shit. I just went to KQ instead and got the pickaxe there, so I'm probably not going back to Volcanic Mine unless I want the XP, I guess. It's weird that they made it broken. Was that only just to force people to do Volcanic Mine? I guess. Because, like, in the collection log, it doesn't I fill think... out if you have a normal dragon pick. Yeah. That's the only thing that makes sense to me, at least. Very strange is to force skillers to have a worse time if they're... <laughs> Fuck yeah. you for not doing PVM. <laughs> hope you like... Uh, <laughs> hope you enjoy Fossil Island. <laughs> yeah, yeah, interesting. Um, I'm trying to think. Most places that I've gone dry, it's thieving. Like, I went eight or nine times dry for my first scepter. Uh, I went... 6,000 dry for my first enhanced teleport seeds, and then... I've gotten three things of blood shards and like 50,000 oh pickpockets and fires. So thieving's one of my least favorite skills, but I have 20 million experience. 
and <laughs> they don't do a good job of making it enjoyable. Like I understand oh, it's that God. just, you know, old school, just click, click, click a million times, but oh my God, with over a 50% fail rate, unless you have like dodgy necklaces and the spell and everything, then it's like 52% success rate. But it like elves are miserable. Like, I'm sorry. Like I could go on a huge tangent right now. I won't, but <laughs> this, something needs to be done with pickpocketing in general, especially I... when there's really good stuff coming from it and it's gate kept by the worst content, just the worst yeah, I don't yeah, enjoy I'd... any facet of thieving. It's bad. It's not a fun skill for me at all. The only thing I really enjoy about thieving is is pyramid plunder. That's the only thing I could ever grind out a lot. I don't know why. Um, it just hits different than just clicking on L4 and already knight or whatever. Um, but yeah, I picked a lot of elves because since I got spooned on, on two enhanced, I needed a lot of shards for corrupting. Oh, so yeah. I've I've been there a while. <laughs> so but yeah, it's not really fun content. It's just brain dead clicking. At, at least they change it to left click, finally. Like oh, that yeah. was the stupidest yeah. thing where it was right click. Like, are you guys high? Like you actually expect <laughs> does any J do any J mods here? Have you guys ever done this for more than twenty minutes? This is actually it's it's bad left clicking even, but like it's just on another level of just stupid when you're right clicking every time. Oh my god. Um, so did you do Pyramid Plunder on your main when you were maxing? Yeah, I did mostly Pyramid Plunder. Um, it's kind of insane though how much content I didn't do as a main account. I think I did more different stuff or new stuff as a UIM the first month than I did five years on a main account. Um, like I remember logging into a I actually had a hardcore before this UIM, and I remember the first day I was like, okay, how do I get a spade? <laughs> Wait, <laughs> I can't buy it on the GE. Wait, how do I get a spade? And I just had like a full-on panic attack. <laughs> so it's a yeah. way different play style. Yeah, I mean, I haven't played a main in like six years, and actually seven years. It's been like almost seven years. And... Yeah. um yeah, uh, now, but it's weird because I've played so much as a maxed Iron Man for like four years that I've actually forgotten like how to play an Iron Man in the early and mid game. It's weird. It's it's almost as if I'm a main. Like if I were to recreate another Iron Man, I'd be just as blind as any main. I feel like <laughs> I've forgotten all the strats. And there's completely brand new strats with just how much has come out since I was at the early stages. I oh, mean, yeah. yeah. The, the game's definitely evolved a lot. I think I'm one of the few, at least one of the fewer people I know who, like, I never made a main. I came back to RuneScape and I made a hardcore as my first account. And because I, I think I saw Foe playing his uh, very, very early on. I was like, okay, cool. I guess I'm just going to make a hardcore because... I know I don't want to fall into my old merch habits and I want to actually experience the game. So I just made a hardcore. That was your ended up... first old school account, a hardcore mm -hmm. Iron Man. You were yep. crazy. I got my quest cape uh, and then <sighs> promptly died 20 KC after getting my skeletal visage at Vorkath. Oh. So I got skeletal visage. I got my quest cape on my hardcore. And then I died because I didn't realize that the range of an RCB is not the full arena. So the very, very first account that I ever had on Old School RuneScape died to Vorkath because I got pulled back into a fireball. Dude, the fact that you made it to Vorkath on your first ever Old School account on a hardcore with a quest cape, that's nuts. That's I... insanely impressive. I did a lot of research before I went into anything dangerous on that account. Yeah, I, I like that is insanely impressive. Yeah, I'm so happy that I'm not playing hardcore anymore. Oh my god. <laughs> what? So what was it like when you first died as a hardcore? Because I've I also have hardcore experience years ago, but was I mean, it a bit depressing? From, it was it was a huge bummer because I remember I had like thirty people in the stream, and I was just like, well. I'm never going to like, no one's ever going to want to watch me again. 
<laughs> no. And it was it was just the worst feeling. Um and so I just decided screw it, I'll instantly re remake. I enjoyed that one and then I got that in like four months to demonic gorillas and then dc seed. Like, oh, oh no. my god, no. <laughs> yeah. And so now like I used to play pretty much exclusively hardcore and now I love regular Iron Man because I'm so happy with how I died. I finally it was finally my own like true what I felt like was a mistake. Like the Vorkath death was a mistake, but it was something that when I went into the fight, I was like, oh, you threw a fireball. Well, I know a hundred percent that I'm not, that I'm two squares away from you. So it's fine. And I was just like, what, wait, what? I had to rewatch it multiple times. And now I'm just like, oh, I had a perfect death. It was to TOA when TOA was new before there were 25 people on the high scores. I was like, okay, cool. I died to my own glance, to my own mistake, to high level PVM after getting a ton of goals done. That's perfect. Yeah. There's that, no way that, I could have a better death. That clip was, uh, it, it hurts to see. That was the one where you're like a, a tile away from the boulder. Mm -hmm. oh. I clicked, I clicked on attacking one, like a fraction of a tick too soon. Oh. So I stopped moving towards the boulder and I just glanced over a chat. <laughs> Took a 70 to the face. <laughs> yeah, but that's like, rough. Anything that's not a DC, I I would have been happy with, but my own actual mistake and not a DC, oh, perfect. Couldn't have asked for a better death. That's that's good. At least you're taking it that way. Uh, normal iron for me, because I remember like my first hardcore was banned because I auto-clicked Alex one night and so that got it was perm banned and it's actually been unbanned. So I have the account back and still hardcore. I just never play it. But, um, then this account was my second hardcore and this one died to, uh, black demons in the catacombs to a DC. And then I just continued. I was really demotivated for like two weeks to three weeks. I was just like, ugh, like uh, normal iron. Oh my God. But now <laughs> I'm absolutely obsessed. Like I've, I've just loved it ever since. It's just no pressure. Just constant progression, no no anxiety dreams. I used to I used to get those as well. So. I feel I'm lucky I never got those. I always got asked that. You I'm never like, had a like a dream of your hardcore dying? Nope. You're crazy. I mean I even I had that. <laughs> <laughs> I was I, it it never gave me anxiety. I was just always upset with myself because I thought, ah, I could have made it so much far. Like I'm better than that. Mm -hmm. it's fine and then yeah so it always felt ripped away from me and like now i have my own sense of agency for my death and i'm okay with it that's good and potato you play a uim something i will <laughs> you know what never say never but i still have yet to play a uim i kind of didn't intend for it either um i actually started a hardcore after i maxed my main um because I kind of realized after I maxed my main that I don't really enjoy playing the game. I enjoy the grind, uh, which I guess is part of the game. But, you know, like I, I enjoy the grind of it, which might sound crazy to some people. Um, so I just enjoy setting a goal and then accomplishing that goal. And my goal on the main had been to max for like years. So once that happened, I kind of just didn't set a new goal and kind of got tired of it. So I created a snowflake hardcore concept that I had. Uh, I even made some YouTube videos on it, but then I realized working full-time streaming and editing videos is insane. So I kind of had to choose between YouTube and streaming, so I kind of choose streaming there. But um, I had played that account for a while. I really enjoyed it, even though it gave me anxiety uh, as a hardcore. <laughs> Um, then one day I, I was going to do a 24 hour stream, like a celebration birthday stream. And I thought of the cool concept of, um, me playing a UIM for 24 hours and just see how far can I get, um, with my game knowledge, just, just send it, see how far I can get for fun. 
I never intended to keep playing the account, but I guess somewhere along the 20 hour mark, my brain just decided this is kind of fun. I'm gonna just keep playing this. And then my hardcore got neglected <laughs> and I never logged in again. <laughs> so so yeah. what, what do you like the most about UIM? I, I don't know. It's... <laughs> I, I really don't know why it's so fun. It's it's very hard, it, but it's like just having to make these like choices of what to keep and kind of like, I, I used to think every UIM was the same. I thought everyone did the same thing, you know, like, oh, you go there and then you do this and, you know, it's a path. Mm -hmm. But then I realized every UIM journey is, is very different. People valued items differently. Some people might go for the master one because they think that's a good option. Other people are like, nah, fuck that. I'll just have an ancient staff or nothing at all. And it's it's just the fun of like deciding what items you want to keep and kind of having to make that sacrifice because you can't really have everything. Um, it also makes PVM way harder. So I don't know. It's just kind of like a challenge and I enjoy it. That's cool. Yeah, I I always love watching UIM. I love watching YouTube series of UIM and I love like watching any streamers that are doing stuff because it's it just seems like a completely foreign game to me. Like it's just it's weird seeing like you just don't use a bank. I don't understand <laughs> that. I've just never done it. So it's completely foreign. I also don't think I would enjoy it simply because I just like collecting things and I don't and I'm like kind of a hoarder sort of. I thought the same. My bank was always full on my main, constantly. But I don't know, your mindset kind of changes. The only mm. thing you kind of regret is when you get your herb sack back for the fourth time at Tide Farm, and you're kind of like, why am I doing this? But, <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, that. <laughs> uh, you just yeah, re reconfirmed my never wanted to do UIM. What do you mean? They made Tide Farm better. It's okay. <laughs> I still... It, I mean, it took me until post max to even get auto weed, and oh, then yeah. I mean, I still don't. I have mean, a that's not auto weed. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. yeah, no, it's fun. I, I just, I, I know I have a UIM. I know people want me to play my UIM, and it's such a baby account. And I do want to give it a like an actual full send one day, when I'm not feeling as motivated as I am on the iron, but. I found myself more focused on like logs and I really enjoy knocking out log slots. So I can't, I'm trying to think of like when I might eventually play the UIM again. And I remember I've already treated this UIM like I would a really, really weird, insane like, I'm going to focus on doing things optimally. So I went and I calced the XP that I would need for 70 prayer <laughs> from all quests and stuff. And this is before they changed the quest XP. And so I went and got 68 prayer in the boneyard. All <laughs> AFK. Holy shit. That's fucked up. I did what? that, that I did that fucked. AFK on the second screen while I would stream on my at the time it was hardcore. Jesus How was that AFK? Wait, bone like we're talking about like picking up bones <laughs> manually, right? Yep. yep. How is that AFKing it? Away from brain. I guess. Okay, okay. Yeah. But away from brain. It was just it was just something that I could do you on the side that was like I didn't have crazy. to pay attention to it. Like, oh no, if I died, someone's gonna pick up maybe six big bones. They don't. <laughs> Usually people stop at 43, but yeah. uh I guess you have the UIM mindset already. So yeah. I was like, I guess I'll just do it and make sure that I have 70 when my quest grind is done. And so it has a bunch of like really awful stats. It already has it's lunar diplomacy crafting done. It has 72 mining done. It has 50 smithing done. And then I was just like, I'm probably going to play it after I die on my hardcore. And I've just been enjoying Grey Helm so much that it's just never been like, I should probably play the UIM. Like, that's going to be fun. I'm just like, no, I'm having way too much fun grinding for these. Well, right now it's Void Waker pieces, but it's been just yeah all greyhelm 
and it's just been a blast trying to knock out log slot after log slot. Wow. Yeah, yeah. that I don't know what it is. Okay, well, let me ask you, Potato. Do you enjoy uh, logging or collection logging? Or I do. You... I do. Okay. Um, the only thing I'm kind of upset about with UIM is I can't store duplicates in my POH, which kind of sucks. Um, I, I drop over everything to my main that I that I kind of don't need. Um, so I kind of have like a tab in my in my banky uh, with like UIM stuff, which is kind of cool. But I, I do like uh, collection logging. It's um, it's a lot of fun and it feels uh, very rewarding on a UIM. Um, so it's going to be cool to see. Speaking of that, okay, so one of the things I remember thinking if I ever played a UIM, one of the updates I would love to see is... Uh, like you could use a bank as a UIM, you can just never withdraw anything. So you can deposit like, you know, things that you'll never use, but you can never withdraw that stuff until after like you de ultimate Iron Man. Or you could, oh my God. you know, transfer that, all that stuff like that bank to like another bank or, or something like that. Just something where it's the convenience of not having to log into another account and drop over stuff because inevitably yeah. you're going to drop over dupes and it would. It would be cool to just have like a UIM bank that you can't withdraw, but at least you can go there and show your viewers if you're a content creator and be like, this is all the stuff I have gotten, but I mm. can just never use it, you know? An ultimate void. Literally yeah. that. I yeah. love that idea. <laughs> That's it's so all fun in games until you accidentally deposit your Tebow. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Oh my God. It'd have to be like a freaking... Um, you know, three <laughs> confirmations like before. Like, Are you really sure? Oh, it would, it would, there'd probably be like confirmations of like GP value. That would be a nice update. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let me ask. Okay. Well, this is actually asked on the Twitter topics. Uh, ZFN asks if you could make any changes to UIM currently, what would it be? If not, what quality of life would you remove? Oh, remove. Hmm. I'm all for the mindset that UIM is just a normal account minus, you know, banking and stuff. Um, so I'm very for that if a main gets, for example, a stash unit, the UIM should also get it. Because in my head, why not? I know there's a lot of arguing in the UIM community about stash units and, and things like that. I do not think they should, like personally like cater to the UIM and give us things just because we want it. But if they're adding like a quality stuff to a main, I think we should also have it as long as it doesn't, you know, affect our restrictions. Um, but there's there's plenty of UIM who has like self-imposed uh, restrictions, like no looting bag, no death piling, no death banking, like crazy shit like that. Um, so I don't think I would ever remove anything. But yeah, I would, I would really love, like, I like your idea with the bank you can just shove things into and not take out. Yeah, that'd be um, amazing. That'd, that'd be really nice. Yeah. But I kind of like the game mode as it is. That's good. That's good to know. Um, yeah, speak, uh, just another thing on the banks. I really wish Jagex would allow us to have to open a secondary bank account. Maybe there's something that's like 200 slots or something. And... The only reason really is, well, first extra bank space, not, not really, but like the main reason is just if you're doing another grind, you can have like a bank tab there. It's like a separate bank where like everything you get from that grind or something can just be put in there and it's not getting mixed with, you know, your other rune stack or your GP stack Herbs or whatever. And, yeah. Exactly. I like that a lot. I would love to and see that. Only because I sometimes, even when I'm logged into Runelight, I lose my loot tab. Yep. <laughs> yep. And I'm just like, I want to show people everything that I got from this. I like that a lot. Yeah, I would really. I'm sure Mr. No Sleep would enjoy that too. I know, that would be great. Even if it was like a fee, you know, like something like, if you want to open this bank account, it's like five mil or whatever. Yeah. That'd be, that'd be amazing. And a little bit of a gold sink too. Yeah. I mean, and before they add it, but you have to go to Old Man Val's basement and it's like a shady bank deposit there. <laughs> I'd be okay with that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, for me, gold has become such an easy thing to grind. Like, I don't know. Some of the drop tables seem silly. They're crazy. It's, it's, 
It, th- this is the problem, oh, though. It's like you, we. First of all, I, I'm not going to get into it. There are so many things I, yeah. I'm just going to briefly mention that's going to be a repeated <laughs> theme throughout this cast because I just I talked about it enough already. But botting is a horrible problem in this game, and it's getting worse, and I feel like it's not being dealt with properly. But that's literally the reason we can't have like skilling ever be profitable. It's just because of just the, the sheer amount of bots bottom. that would just take advantage of it. And it's really sad because kind of – pushes that further that we need drop tables that are just busted kind of because i don't know and and of course players want i feel like the overall the average player almost expects it at this point to have like very generous drop tables yeah so. must but was a mistake <laughs> I yeah feel like tough. um i don't I, f- I mean sorry go ahead uh i just feel like people are gonna botch it anyway and i feel like it shouldn't like restrict um like what content comes into the game i feel like those things are very separate like dealing with the botting issue is is one side and adding content that is fun and engaging for every game mode is another thing and i feel like these two might start like already maybe have started to overlap like they they're affecting each other in ways they shouldn't which is really annoying yeah, I, I actually agree with that. I feel like for the most part, we shouldn't ever make content based off of like, oh, these bots are going to do something. So we have to make it less enjoyable or less whatever. Yeah, because yeah. bots just get more and more advanced. They, there's bots that PvP, there's bots that kill Sora. It's not like they're going to like exactly. stop botting. They're going to bot it anyway, you know? Yeah. yeah. It's and there's just... always good old revs. Yeah. <laughs> it's... It's tough because, I mean, I have no idea what exactly is going on with, you know, bots and how difficult the problem really is. But what's silly is just how blatantly obvious there are. There are, like, just bot farms in every corner of this game. Just everywhere. So blatantly obvious, too. I was literally thieving with a guy. And it's just like, dude, you just open the door on him. Or, like, he'll he'll open the door to, like, thieve an elf. And I'll just close it. And then he sits there for three seconds, opens it again. I close it. Sits there for three seconds, opens it again, close it. He doesn't say anything. It's like, it's just a clearly a bot. Yeah. It's like, can we get, can the report button do something for once? Can we get something done with it? Like, it's just, it's obnoxious and they're everywhere. And it, yeah. it ruins my gaming experience. And so that's why I'm like really upset with it. It's like... And you go to LMS and it's like you got seven different accounts spamming websites. I'm like, can we just per- not permanently mute them, permanently ban them? Just just ban them. Somebody, get, just one player needs the power to just ban these accounts that are blatantly just r- advertising websites. Just how do they get away for months and months and months just sitting here spamming advertisements? Like, it's wild. what the fuck? I, I've yeah, been... I've been in the wilderness for basically the past like three months straight and I'm up to 1400 RDO and 2200 Callisto. And I think the only reason why I can get a world is when I go crash a bot and then it's whoever has PID at the start of the next kill as soon as I have the timer. And so I'm like, I'm so far drop so far past drop rate for uh void waker hilt that that's the only thing that works to get rdo kills now to get it to find a world Jesus. is every single person i crash if they're a real player i hop if i look them up and they have 499 total and 160 range xp or 160 mil range xp with eighteen thousand <laughs> kills i'm like what are you doing jagex i know it's How is so this bad like, just it's... look at the top 25 or 50 and anyone who you see has tens of thousands of kills and 400 total level why is that okay yeah it's bad <sighs> like it's and and may and this is the other thing it's like okay yes there are probably exceptions where a dude is literally just built different <laughs> or he it's an actual player that's gold farming but he hasn't actually broken any rules yet he's just you know living in some you know place in a basement just grind that's his full-time occupation is grind this 16 hours a day and then eventually cash like out that, uh, like <laughs> that one streamer has 200 000 mole 
Casey. Oh Shere my Khan. god. <laughs> yeah, Shere Khan. Shere Khan. <laughs> Shere Khan's so nice. He's such a nice person. He is. As he is insane though. <laughs> 200,000 yeah. mole. Yeah, I, I had Not just known him as a Twitch viewer, and then all of a sudden I was like, oh, that's the, like, I connected the two dots. I'm like, this dude is a gamer. 200,000. <laughs> is that the most of any boss kills ever? I, I, I think so. Say, yeah, I don't know. I've never, I've never I, looked up. I think up. it is. I'm, yeah, I'm I wouldn't be surprised. Certain. Anything else would be insane. There's something, cl someone is, um, I think it's Flash Voyage. He is at 190,000 medium clues done. Shit. Yeah. Do you know how many hours that is? That's like 9,500 hours of just <laughs> mediums. Mm, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you're doing it for masters for third age, sure. But if you just love ranger boots. Oh, he's, I wonder how many it has. Yeah. He's had, um, um, somebody said he's had like 70 something, or uh, sorry, <laughs> 700 something. What yeah. the fuck? Yeah. All I, think right. it's, I think it's 700 something. Yeah, I think I remember that from Jace's. Yeah, yeah, Jace yeah. was talking about it. That's right. Yeah, that is just unbelievable. That is such a crazy grind. I mean, um, this is probably an ancient name. Neither of you guys remember. Let me know if you do. Paul No Life. Do you, does that ring a bell at all? No. No. He was a um. Well, he's an interesting character, <laughs> but uh, he <laughs> he was a, like a two hundred mil all player. He was um. Or he he never accomplished 200 mil all, but he was one of those skillers that was going for 200 mil all. And he would stream here and there, and he did nature rune crafting to 200 mil. And I mean, it, it was like 8,000 hours. It was like 25, you know, 27k XP an hour. And he literally did it like on stream. And he, his, I remember, you know, popping in and he was talking about his routine. He would like wake up. Um, you know, do some push-ups, do some sit-ups or whatever, and then grind for like 19 hours or like 18 hours or something every single day. And it was just an, just like 8,000 hours of that. I'm like, that is nuts. So yeah, people that can go crazy doing one method over and over and over for, you know, 10,000 hours or something. I mean, that is just, that's wild. Some yeah. people are just how built much, different. Literally. How much money was that? I assume this is like a long time ago when nature runes were actually worth money. And I remember double natures were mm -hmm. one of the best money makers in the game for a long time. Yeah, I want to say he made around like 15 bill or something. Which it <laughs> it's not even like that not worth crazy. It. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's not even like that insane. I don't know. I mean, I remember Rigandau as well when he first started streaming. He was doing, he went, he got to 100 mil RC and he was doing natures for all of that. And he was just loaded with GP. I mean, he was just filthy rich and yeah, probably over 10 bill or not, not, well, I, I think his whole bank was like worth over 10 bill, which like at the time for not staking and doing stuff like that, that's nuts being a skiller and having that much money. I can understand being a PVMer and just doing raids all day. That's, that's a different story, but. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's some there's some beasts out there. Like I've put in a significant amount of hours. Like I'm I'm up I think I'm at like eighteen thousand on this account, which is just disgusting, but at the same time I do a, just a bunch of different stuff. It's not just one repetitive. I guess the whole game's repetitive technically, but <laughs> yeah. I'm suddenly reminded how much I have <laughs> as far as time played to the age of my account. Yeah, I saw this account good. like maybe a little over a year ago. Let's see, 112 days time played. Well, oh. yeah. Yep, 773 days. 73, no way. Yeah, no way. <laughs> no that way. Hard. It's, yeah, it's I'm, actually I'm shot gonna... up quite a bit because of the new um, n not being logged out after five minutes. Like, oh yeah, so oh, much yeah. more of my play time is literally just sitting there waiting for the 25 minute timer to run out. Yeah, I remember when I think I play less now than I used to when I was still working in finance. And like now that streaming's my full time job, it's like less time played somehow per day. And it's because I'm not logged in at work at my desk in a cubicle, mm. just AFK, whatever skill I can do. And then PVM when I get home. But 
even then, like, I think my account's a little over a year and a half old. And I'm at 228 days played, which is way too much. <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least in that, you don't have to feel bad about it because it's your job now, you know? So you just yeah. feel better about it. That's what I, that's my coping, Heavy coping, that's my coping but... mechanism. <laughs> oh, no, no, I feel bad. <laughs> it's totally fine. It's, it's, it's my job, smile. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, okay, so Mantis, we already asked, we already answered his first question. Where did Sid Orlando come from, Final Fantasy? Um, for both of you, what is your favorite content to do while not streaming? So I guess RuneScape still, but favorite content, not live. Anything that doesn't give me a drop that can get on Behemoth. Mm. <laughs> no, but I, I try to do like the, the shitty grinds when I'm not live, mostly. Like I do, I do enjoy most grinds though. But I try to just do things that will be convenient for me later, like blood ring crafting, for example, or yeah, mm. or skills I really despise, like fishing. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, for me, it's anything that I can do to avoid skilling on stream. So I'm mining amethyst right now, Very and then nice. I I will probably either do like angler fish or maybe i'll continue running bones on prayer at chaos altar because that's pretty that's a lot better to do off stream not that i, I do all the uh, windy on stream but yeah I do, I do all windy pvm on stream i just don't do i just don't run bones yeah that's smart I don't yeah. do, I, I used to do, like, I've done things in the wilderness here and there, but, like, you just get one asshole that just wants to ruin your day, and it's just like, oh, my God, like. I feel like I'm really lucky that I don't get stream sniped. That's But maybe nice. it's just because I play at degen hours. Because I start my stream at 5 p.m. and I end at 3 a.m. So, I'd say half the time when I'm doing revs on stream if I have someone who is attacking me, my favorite thing to do is be, just been recently. I say hi. I ask how their day is going. Ask if they've gotten any good kills lately. And sometimes they'll type back to me. Sometimes they won't. Uh, and then we usually have a nice chat. Once I get to the 30 line and I teleport out and we have a nice chat on the way to the gnome bank and I'm like, good luck out there. And then they never attack me again. It's been my favorite thing of just like talking to people as they try and kill me. And then if I survive, which has been pretty much all the, I think I've only died twice at revs, which is nice. But like, if I get out most of the time, I'm just making friends out in rev caves because they're trying to enjoy themselves too. And it's been Said, uh, so social nice. engineering with friendship. And oh my God. It's so great. <laughs> I had one person who came up. Void Waker specked me twice. I put a question mark in chat and he said, I don't know. And then he just logged out <laughs> and I just lost it. I like, I, I had to leave. I chat was super happy and I was, I, I just couldn't, I couldn't for a good solid five minutes. I was like, that is the best interaction I've ever had in my life. <laughs> so one of the things that worked with me is this is before I started streaming, but I was doing the rev grind. And uh, I was out there for like three months or something. And changing your character to a girl character drastically reduced the amount of, uh, you know, harassment in the wilderness. It seemed seemed to me, you know, that's I that I can't I can't say that's like a huge sample size study, but it worked for me. So maybe it's <laughs> that might be it because I do play as a female character. That could that definitely totally that could definitely be it. Something I deeply that... like psychological, like when you see that, you're like, okay, like you know, it's a it's a damsel in distress. Like we're, we're, we 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 want to attack. Yeah, I think it's the combination of that and having like a four character name. Mm. Yeah, and I think a lot of that is if I have the confidence to type during being PK'd and fight back, and I survive, they're usually like, all right, we're not we're not gonna bother next yeah. time. It's kind of like, yeah, a, I, I mean, it's not going to protect against everything, but it, I definitely felt the difference. I could see it. Yeah. So that was yeah. nice. I just like 
fashion because the fashion is true end game problem with female characters in this game is like I, and i don't know if they fixed i know they fixed a few things but i felt like whenever i was holding a weapon like the weapon was like outside of the wrist because like the females are just like more narrow uh bodies and arms and so like everything it just it there was some things that just didn't look proper and it bothered me too much so yeah i hate how the backscape okay. looks on a female character it just looks shorter i guess i, I mm. guess it's supposed oh, yeah, to be right. model is shorter but it looks very i don't know one of the Weird. <laughs> one of the things that the female character does right actually is the vire outfit i don't know if you've seen if oh you, yeah dude have you seen the male vire out i'm just gonna, i'm just gonna show this to like my end on youtube is your arms look like a beef stick like it literally just it looks like a i don't it looks like a turkey leg you get at disneyland like genuinely like your oh, arm no. your elbows oh, lower no. like just imagine here i'm actually just gonna take a picture and send it to you guys um and your your arms literally look like here i'll just show you Oh, like, why, why, why oh, does your elbow what? go down six inches? You know what I mean? Yeah, I use the Vire it's terrifying. Uh, Noble Bottoms or one of the variants of the Vire Noble Bottoms with my um, with my fashion for my female character. I just wonder, like, who, what artist so, approved this? Like, how is this appropriate? Maybe it was like an intern project. Like, just draw an arm, kid. <laughs> this is what an arm looks like. Yeah, right? Yeah. Okay. Seen an arm before? <laughs> yeah, I love the... I think the Vire Noble outfit, uh, especially the variants that you can buy from the shop, which not a lot of people know that they exist. Because there's... Oh, like, yeah, yeah, dif yeah, There's different color variants yeah. Oh, yeah. just above the bank. And I, I swear by the uh, Vire Noble skirt with the red tailing with the black mm. just because it works so well with evil chicken oh nice do you have any evil yeah. chicken pieces so i'm probably about to make a few people who are like collection logs <laughs> mad i had three pieces in 66 kc what on my hardcore <laughs> unique i pieces? still have hmm? jesus yeah. christ so i have feet top and uh, legs and I use the uh, evil chicken wings and the evil chicken feet in my fashion which I just sent Let's yeah wow I'm gonna show this yeah so that's that's my like current fashion with the new crystal crown that's pretty badass I'm not gonna lie that's some that's some good shit yeah I just recently decided that my grind for this account is a really really stupid one but I want all eight crystal crowns on my iron. What? So I have two one. bill. Yeah. Two bill that doesn't count towards bank value. Yeah. Which, yeah. So I have the first one. The account's a year and a half old and I'm like, like 86, seven mil somewhere in there Damn. on the next one. Yeah. I'm, I'm one of those crazy motherfuckers that bought 888 mil worth of bank space. <laughs> but at least it's actually worth something rather than just a crown. Oh yeah. So. I I bought a thousand and I can't break I can't get a thousand forty. It's just it feels it right horrible. being yeah. at an even thousand. It's e it's either you stick at a thousand or you have to go all the way to twelve hundred. Like you can't yeah. you can't have an increment in between. I agree. Yeah. Now do it on a UIM. No. <laughs> <laughs> you should be able to as long as they, you know, have that just black void of bank space you yeah, can just have. True. Yeah, that's that's some cool. Do you have any uh, fashion outfit, Potato? It's probably a lot more difficult on a UIM. Uh, not on a UIM, no. I can f actually show you like what I'm wearing right now. It's um, it's mostly like I wear things to save space, kind of look. So I always look like a absolute degen everywhere I go. So I get, I get a lot of comments on my outfits in game and they're like, what the fuck are you wearing? And then I write hi and they're like, oh, you're a UIM. That makes sense. <laughs> well, what are those pants though? Are those like rock shell uh, Those, No, those are Torex. Torex? Legs, actually. Torex. <laughs> okay. <laughs> those look so much different on a female character. Yeah. That looks like, I mean, that's, uh, you're kind of blinged out. I kind of like it. That looks cool. <laughs> yeah. Yep. 
Yeah, that's one of the things that would frustrate me playing my UIM is no access to like switching outfits quickly and having to deal with, well, if it's not in a POH, then you're kind of out of luck. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I usually change my boots and my cape because those are usually storable in POH and then body and legs, like the melee ones I can store in my bag, which is nice, but the crystal, the crystal armor is untradeable once it's, you know, made. I could revert the seeds, of course, and bag those, but no, nah, they're too good. So uh, those are like permanent slots in my inventory at all times. So have you guys ever heard of my uh, like hardcore UIM proposal? It's basically UIM, but hardcore. So you can't die. If you die, your account's deleted. It's just gone. <laughs> um, um, maybe, oh, no. maybe, maybe it doesn't have to be deleted, but like you would just revert to a normal UIM, I guess. Maybe that, maybe that could be it, but you would be removed from the high scores. You wouldn't be crossed out. You'd be removed from it. Just so we don't get a bunch of spam of like crossed out names. Um, I'm okay with that. But, but this, these would be the restrictions is you cannot use stash units. You cannot own a POH and, oh, shit. and you can't physically have a looting bag ever in your inventory. Like you can't pick one up and you can't die. So you can't have any like death storage. It's literally whatever is in your inventory. Like that's 28 plus gear. Yeah. That's kind of how Molly Music plays the game. Really? Except, you know. Yeah, she she has to rule she that if she dies by accident, she has to run back and get all her stuff immediately before doing anything else. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, she plays no bank, no looting bag, or yeah, no looting bag, no looting, no bag. Okay. No no looting bag, bag, no death storage. Uh, Damn, I didn't know that. Yeah, and she does quests guideless. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, that sounds horrible. <laughs> <laughs> it's very entertaining. For me, to watch. yes. Yeah, that that would be an amazing mode. It, it wouldn't be for everybody, but that would take some serious planning, at least for like some quests where it's literally like, you know, if you have to enter in Trana or if you have to, you know, give that guy twenty five essence or, or fifty essence or whatever. I that one's not that big of a deal because you could just do it in multiple trips. But there's there's some things that would be very difficult doing with no looting bag whatsoever like you nothing would you would have to be able to will you'd have to be willing to drop like anything at any time basically i think the way yeah. to go about an account like that is just get all the skilling things done first before you start getting any gear yeah like you would yeah. be a yeah. skiller until you start pvm basically yeah that would make the game mode pretty stale but that's literally how you'd have to do it if like i i, I would basically well, suffer. yeah i would just do agility first 99 and then you know fishing to 99 and then just like it's like Maybe basically doing skills one to 99 that might be why i hate playing my uim that's a baby because it's just doing one bad skilling grind after another <laughs> yeah to be to be somewhat efficient you kind of have to yeah mm -hmm. um let's see Nick asks, Sid, what are some of the mental health challenges associated with being a streamer and how do you manage them? Um, I guess I'll ask you as well, Potato, if that, if it's relatable. Manage them. That's a great thought to try and do. <laughs> <laughs> People um, manage management. their mental health. <laughs> we just play I Runescape. Mean, <laughs> So I, I'm very lucky. I never really experienced any sort of anxiety until I left my job in finance, like left a good career in finance to start streaming. And boy, howdy, would I not <laughs> recommend that. Streaming's a <laughs> wonderful hobby. Oh my God. It's one of the best hobbies in the fucking world. Without a doubt. It is entirely different to live at the whim of people's generosity and i don't do youtube and i don't yeah i could manage my mental health probably a little bit better but it would involve streaming less and i love streaming so much because it's my happy place like 
I have streaming as my happy place, and then I have my cat, and my other cat, and my wife, and that's about it. Um, so, I... Managing mental health would be great. I have no idea how to do it myself, because now <laughs> I understand how anxiety feels. <laughs> and I wish the best to anyone who's ever dealt with it, because it is so insanely difficult to change your mindset, especially after working in finance, where I see people who don't have their lives together and I'm responsible for helping make sure people are making the right decisions for their future. And then I turned around and I'm like, are you N no, maybe not. Maybe we'll see. G good luck next month. <laughs> maybe everything will come crumbling down. Maybe Twitch decides to be even worse than they are. Like, yeah. Yeah. I don't it's... know how to manage mental health. Mainly because I'm so new to streaming at a full-time job. And I've been lucky to never experience this anxiety. But, yeah, I, I wish I had a solution. Because I would love to preach it to the world. Yeah, it's <laughs> tough being a... Uh, because I kind of went down the same thing where I just put, put all my eggs into one basket, which was, I guess, initially streaming. And then I eventually started YouTube, which, by the way, was the best decision I made when it comes to just being a content creator. I would highly suggest it if you haven't considered it um, because you you don't need to do what everyone does. Like this idea, I feel like, was going through my head and it goes through a lot of people, a lot of streamers' heads that just kind of, put away YouTube or like the thought of it is like, oh, well, I don't want to edit it or I don't want to make a series or whatever. There is endless possibilities when it comes to content creation. I literally just made it where I just talk, like just uh, record, stop recording, just upload basically. And, you know, it's a slow process initially, but I don't know. For full time, I would highly recommend it. And there's so there's endless possibilities. Whatever you find like fun or whatever you would enjoy doing, like there's an audience for it. YouTube is massive, way more massive than Twitch as oh, well. Yeah. It's just huge. The discoverability is unreal it's because you have so twenty four seven access to content. Exactly. Yeah, I've thought about going into it, but. It's in for me at least. It's in a weird catch twenty two of, I would have to stream less, <laughs> mm -hmm. to get into it, and I don't want to cut down on streaming, to That's then fair. work on YouTube to hopefully maybe, yeah. get more viewers to Twitch where I feel like my, my content at least is much more suited to streaming, and I feel like I would have to change a lot of what i do or enjoy interacting with as far as people i'd have to change a lot of that just to maybe be i don't know more digestible on youtube if that makes sense mm -hmm. yep yeah. there there obviously has to be some sort of alterations but yeah yeah it can't be about music anymore it can't yeah. be about jamming out with friends for That's sure definitely true uh, what about you, Potato? Do you, at, at times, struggle? I think I think we all do, to a sort of extent. Um, I thankfully have a full-time job that, you know, at least doesn't give me anxiety fan financially, which is really good. Because I could not live off Twitch the way it is now, at least. That would, as it say, <laughs> said, uh, cause me a lot of anxiety. But, you know, numbers still get in your head. I think I think every content creator has this experience. Like, you think it doesn't matter, and then you start looking at graphs, and then you're like, why did it dip there? What did I say there? What did I do wrong? And you kind of get in, like, your head a little bit. But I just try to, like, remind myself that, like, look back a year or two. Where was I then? I am doing better now. And like me two years ago would be very shocked and very proud of where I am right now. So you kind of just need to like do that reality check a little bit when the numbers get in your head. Um, some people say to not look at numbers, but 
I'm I'm a spreadsheet slot, so I can't not look at numbers. I sp spreadsheets are my thing. <laughs> I love yeah. graphs, so so I I try not to look at them, but but I kind of have to because it's too much fun. So yeah. Yeah, a lot of people recommend not looking at numbers. I've always been, I'm I'm a number starer. I always look, like, I will literally look at my live view account. Ever, oh. day one since streaming, I've always had my dashboard open. People are like, don't do that. It's the worst thing ever. I will admit, <laughs> there are definitely downsides to it. But there's a lot of positives, too, because when you're, there's something, okay, well, just in regards to the live view count, besides, I love looking at like after stream numbers and stuff. I, well, at least before partner, I used to like really love that. Um, I don't care as much anymore. I just kind of stream and then just enjoy it. But live view count can have definitely negatives where you're like, you say something and then all of a sudden you look at over your live yeah. count, you drop 10 viewers and you're like, oh shit. Like, what did I yeah, do? Yeah, I, I don't watch the live count because of that. Um, but I've somehow noticed that. Whenever I'm angry, I get more viewers. I don't know why. <laughs> uh, it's it's like it makes me feel like shit when oh, I'm yeah. like have to yell at people. But whenever I yell at people, I get more viewers. So it's like I'm I'm very confused about this. I don't get it. <laughs> I, I think that's where our communities interlap. Is our communities? What's the nicer way to phrase this? They like <laughs> being degraded. <laughs> <laughs> It's, Hold up. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. But I, I think that's they enjoy seeing you and then I think the emote is Angry Dome. Yeah. Yeah. We use they, the Angry they Dome. Enjoy, they enjoy seeing that. Yeah. And I cannot imagine dealing with your chat sometimes. I <laughs> love them to death, but they give you such a harder time than they ever do me. They do. Um I don't know, like I have a very like roller coaster personality. I can go from very happy to very angry very fast. And I don't try to hide it. I don't try to suppress it at all. Um that showed just the way I am. And sometimes when I work, you know, a twelve hour shift, I come home and I go live and we're four hours into a stream. I've been awake for like sixteen plus hours and someone starts piping. I just wanna rip them a new one and I don't hold back. <laughs> So uh, sometimes yeah. switch viewers need it. Need a wake up call. <laughs> yeah. I think yeah. I I think for me it's because I don't react. Like I I'll get disappointed in myself, but I I don't think I've ever been angry on stream. I just don't get angry in life. That's and impressive. It's just, it's just more frustration with myself with my own shortcomings. Like when I'm doing poorly, when I'm having a bad raid day. And I'm dying way more than I should. It's more just like, ugh, I'm just not having fun and I'm bummed, but I'm never angry. For me, it's kind of the same. Like, I get way more angry when I'm learning content um, because I get mad at myself for not immediately understanding it. For example, I was learning a 6 0 door alter method at Bandos with Bofa. And. Uh, you know, you keep messing up in the start and you get really pissed and then, you know, someone pipes and you kind of just take that anger that you have for your own shortcomings, I guess. And then you kind of lash it out on this poor little person in chat <laughs> that didn't really do anything except say, keep your HP over zero. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, it happens. I have apologized to people actually in the past off the stream because I felt bad for lashing out. Yeah, I try yeah. to be very, I, the only times I've really gotten pissed off are when I try to do like over 12 hour streams. I've had a few 24s where I have just, like there was one I was going to do a 24 hour stream and about 19 hours in it just rage quit because just having the most annoying pipers just coming in and just. I remember that one. Do you remember that? Oh I was in, I was yeah. doing Sepulchre and I just, fucking, yep. yeah, I just like, mm -hmm. no, nope, not having it, <laughs> not having it. Yeah. Because like. And it would normally be fine. Like, I could deal with basically anything in a normal stream. But when you are just tired and exhausted and it's already, like, you could you could just imagine sleeping in bed and closing your eyes and you're just sitting there and you're like, oh, my God. Like, yeah. 
it gets pretty bad. That that one I couldn't do anymore. And but I I try to at least in the moment try to realize like, okay, am I overreacting? And I probably was, but there's only so much you can exactly. And it's like if yeah. I continue, it's just gonna get worse. Like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna start feeling better miraculously after being up for you know twenty plus hours. Can't do twenty fours anymore. Dude, 24s are hell. The The longest oh. stream I ever did was 27 and a half hours. And I killed a 150 corp solo. Holy shit. In one sitting. Damn. I mean, I'm too don't, old for that. Yeah. Like, don't get me wrong. The You know, the incentives were great. I mean, that was a great, really profitable stream. But <laughs> I just remember, like, yeah, 150 corp. Like, that. it's just like... It's because you understand that it's it's not even a time limit. It's not like, okay, you can just end after this time. It's like, no, you have to push through. It's on you. Like, I have to hit 150 corp right now because that's what it was. It was like it was paying for, like, corp kills. <laughs> so oh, I capped geez. it at 150. <laughs> and I am literally just trying to, like, full focus, like, trying to get these corp kills in. And every single one was just taking so long. Oh, my God. Yeah, that was... It was pretty bad. <laughs> it was an iconic stream. It was, it was good for the most part. but Yeah, the longest stream I've done was also 27 hours. I was trying to do a 30, but at 27, I just kind of almost fell asleep in my chair. So we did like a, we did a poll in the chat, like, should I go to bed or not? And not a single person said I should stay and stream. So <laughs> that was very nice good. of them. <laughs> <laughs> that's I, actually that is actually so something similar that happened to me it was like i think at the time it was just do 150 core but then somebody i had this stupidest idea of having a redemption for a 30 hour stream so somebody's like oh well i'll just be like generous here and since you've already streamed for like 25 plus hours i'll just redeem this and you can just do the 30 hour here and then somebody redeemed it. And yeah, by the time I was out with the 150, I was like, please, guys, please, will you let me go to sleep? <laughs> like, it, it's so crazy because I remember the morning after, I was like, oh, I could have done the 30. But in the moment, you can't. You just can't. Mm -mm. It's just. No, your brain shuts down. Yeah, you're just too weak. The, the last time I did a 24, I was sick for the next three days. Oh. And I just, I, I've written them off since. I've done a Good. couple 18 hours. And I normally stream 10 hours a night. Like, 10's my normal. Damn. Occasionally, I'll do, like, 12 to 14. But anything more than 18. And I'm I'm too old. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I, know most, I know most of the community is significantly younger than I am. Yeah. I, I age... don't know anyone who's who streams for a full-time job who's older. Wait, how old are There's, you? I will be 35 in just under two months. How old's so Fo? I'm a little bit I'm a little bit older than Fo. I know a cold um, one is what's a cold one? Is he 33? I don't know actually. Okay. Well, he's younger than yeah. 34, I think. So. Yeah. Damn, yeah. I think you are. Yeah. Most I'm people honest. guess that I'm like, oh, 30, 28. I'm like, oh, thank you. You guys don't see my gray hairs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would think you're about like just 30. Yeah. It's crazy though. Almost mid, almost halfway through 30s. How does that feel? Yeah. Not good. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, my, don't get me wrong. My 30s are fantastic. I love my 30s so much more than my 20s. But it feels awful to say that, oh, how, how you know, what age group are you in? I mean, 18 to 34, not for long. Oh, nope. no. That's, oh, no. I'm in my mid 30s. That's terrifying. Yeah. No, thank you. See, yeah. I, I'm excited for, wait. Um. Okay, wait. Potato, how old are you? 25. Okay. That's crazy. That's just crazy. <laughs> yeah. No, but I'm excited for my, because I, I just turned 28 this month. And I'm excited for my 30s, low key. But I will say there is like I'm excited for a thirty. I don't know. <laughs> I was excited mid, for mid thirties is an entirely different feeling. Yeah. I was like, oh, I'm thirty. That's kind of cool. <laughs> it's no longer cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Age. It's just catching up. I started streaming when I was twenty three. Man, twenty three. A little baby. 
And I thought I was already super <laughs> old too. I thought 23 was like, oh, I'm a late, I, like I'm a late starter to, to the stream game. But no. I thought the same. <laughs> I yeah. absolutely feel like a boomer. Sometimes I'm like, do I want to put an emoji in my stream title? I'm like, no, no, I don't. <laughs> do it. I'm older than this. <laughs> It's not that I'm better than this. It's just that I'm too old to be doing this. I feel too old for like TikTok, and <laughs> I don't do Instagram because I just dislike dislike Facebook. Yeah, yeah. Uh, meta. But I don't do TikTok I, either. I avoid I it feel, like like. I just feel so old when someone's like, "Oh yeah, I feel old. How are, old are you? 23. I'm like, cool. That's nice. Enjoy your twenties. I don't remember that age at all. It's fine." Yep, age catches up. Do you, uh, I think one of the weirdest things was um, not recognizing. There was one morning I just had a really rough morning. It was like I, I it was like a a hangover, but I didn't actually drink the night before. But it was just like I was. I think it was the allergies, and it just didn't get, didn't get good sleep. I think I drank a ton of caffeine the night before. I just woke up and I looked at the mirror and I looked like a total train wreck. And I just looked at myself. I was like, dude, like. I don't even recognize myself. Like I'm genuinely getting old. Like my face looks old and it was a really terrifying moment. This is like a year ago when I like had that wake up call. Like I'm not 20 anymore. Like I'm literally not 20 anymore. It feels like you're forever college age until you're not. And then it's like, Oh shit, it's over. Like it's over for me. <laughs> yeah. For me, it was just like, I've been in a career for the better part of a decade and like, okay, do I do what I want to do and try for the dream job? Yes, absolutely. It's a hundred percent worth it. And I'm so, so grateful that I have a supportive community and that I have my amazing wife because without my wife, I would not be able to do this as a living. And so I'm just like, well, what if I, what if I have to stop? And what if all of these career goals are just like then going to come back and you're going to be like, oh, so you're, you know, mid thirties. Where's your last five years or four years or six years of job history? And I'm like, that's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, it's, it's sometimes, I don't know. I feel like. like I feel like you just have to, like, you live once. Like, you have exactly. to, you have to push for the dream. You have to do something that is really deeply, like, you know, something that's eating you up inside. It's just like, I got to try this because if, if you don't. And if it makes you happy. Yeah. Genuinely. Yeah. yeah. I'm, it's definitely, like, I had to, I, I couldn't not try. Yeah, and some people are just really like that, and especially when you just have like, I don't know, midlife or quarter life. I feel like when I say midlife or quarter life crisis, like every, we have multiple crises in our lives, like it's just nonstop <laughs> crises, oh, basically. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm really grateful that I like went for what you know. And everybody was like, everybody I was around was like, "What are you doing? Like, go back to school, go back to school." I'm like, honestly, I look back now and it's like, yeah, like could have been a different life path, but. You know, in retrospect, like, yeah, maybe I could have enjoyed school, but I actually don't think I would have because it would, in the back of my mind, I would have always been thinking of this with the knowledge of, you know, both paths. That's a different story, but you can only go down one path and you, you don't know what, what the other side would have brought anyway. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sorry. Did you guys have anything? another no one. i i would just reiterate that it if someone is trying to get into streaming it's the most amazing hobby you can ever have and if you truly love it take it as far as you can go yeah yeah it's so it's so wonderful it doesn't hurt to try yeah okay danny on bundy asks potato <laughs> please tell the bus stop or ocean <laughs> slash lake story Oh god, I knew this would come up. Like, I don't know if I should it. though. <laughs> so what is it? This comes back to the fact that I don't have any filters and I share way too much with my Twitch chat. Oh god. And sometimes 
when you're just like sitting there, you know, eight hours in a stream and chat is getting kind of quiet, you just start bringing out the the worst possible stories of your life just for content. Um, so I don't know if I should tell them or if they should just come to my stream and hear them there, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. yeah, there's some stories about me throwing things into lakes and maybe, uh, you know, <laughs> doing things behind bus stops. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. So it's better left untold. <laughs> yeah, I think so for now. All right. For well, now. In, in the description, everybody, um, if you want to, <laughs> if you want to ask her on her stream, go go drop a follow to both Potato and Sid down in the description. Um, he also asks, Sid, why did you kill my hardcore? Okay. <laughs> what, so, ha what happened there? So here's the thing. One, it's only partly my fault. <laughs> Uh, so Danny was doing Zora on his hardcore and I came into his chat and Danny's pretty much the only person that I constantly bug and prod in a stream. Uh, and it's because he takes, he takes it so well and he gives it back twice fold and it's wonderful. He's a fantastic streamer. Um, so he's doing Zora. I just tune into his stream. He is completely distracted by chat, is AFKing at the docks for like five or six minutes, does a kill. I show up on his world and uh, I said, I waited like 12 minutes for you to finish this kill so I could show up for your next kill. And he looks over. And the first thing that he says to me is he says, fuck off, Sid, because I just bugged him about how dare you take 12 minutes to re-gear for a Zolra kill. <laughs> and so okay. he goes, fuck off, Sid. And then the next words out of his uh, mouth are, wait, am I dead? Because unbeknownst to me, and also he didn't notice, is he procked his life about five, ten minutes before on his hardcore so there weren't, I think there was one person in chat who noticed and like said one message about him dying and using his daily revive on his hardcore at Zolra. Oh, no. oh, so no. he didn't see it. I had no idea that it had happened. I don't think most of his chat noticed because he was, he was going off on the other person and giving them shit back. And it was great fun. And then he collapses and he doesn't revive and it was just confusion. Oh no. And so that's my follow sound is Danny going, fuck off, Sid. And then <laughs> every once in a while it'll say, fuck off, Sid. And then it'll say, wait, am I dead? <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> oh, it was the most depressing thing. Cause I've uh, been, I've been there. This was like a month and a half, maybe after I lost my hardcore. And I felt so bad. Oh. That I was the like distraction in the moment. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. yeah, I did not mean to do it, Danny. I'm sorry. I love you to bits. Uh, also, sit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I no would, offense I, to Danny though, but I'm I'm surprised his account lasted that long with the amount he used to drink on stream. <laughs> like, holy shit, that man can PVM and drink. It's it's crazy. <laughs> that man's chances. <laughs> I think I got chanced <laughs> once before I died. It was one time in CG when I was doing hardcore tier three CG. I might have been chanced twice, but yeah, I was like, I didn't get a chance at Baba. Damn. All right, fine. Well, that's funny. Yeah, I would oh, not consider that your fault at all. By the way, yeah. Sid, Danny. No. <laughs> um. I don't think he considers it my fault at all. Okay, he's just, that's good. He's just yeah. trolling. Uh, he's, he's fantastic. Schmacko asks, what's your favorite interaction you've ever had with a troublesome chatter slash troll? How did you deal with it? And do you think you'd handle it the same way now? Also, Potato, can I have my wife back, please? <laughs> <laughs> Only on the weekends. <laughs> yeah. All right. She's mine now. <laughs> Any uh, uh, troublesome chatter stories? So, 
I'd have a few troublesome chatters. Every once in a while, I'll get someone. But for me, because I don't get angry, my favorite thing to do is someone just comes in, new message, first time chatter, and they just insult me, is I just don't read them. And then someone, usually on my mod team, will ban them. And I don't usually want people to ban them because I'd rather use that for content personally. Mm -hmm. So if someone comes in, calls me ugly, we just leave them on red. The same thing that all their Tinder matches do to them forever. Like it's fine. <laughs> We're just not going to respond. If they really want to keep upping it, I'll be like, this is, this is what you want to do with your life. Do you really have nothing? That's, that's kind of sad, man. You can do better. Hey, how's your day? Hopefully you're doing okay. Like what's, what's going on in your life? How can I make your day better? I'm here to make people happy. How can I make you happy? And I've had a couple people who have like come into the discord and DM'd me on discord after a stream. And I've like, I've talked to them for a good 20 minutes. And wow. sometimes it's just someone having a really awful fucking day. And they made a new Twitch account and they just wanted to knock someone down. And my favorite thing that I've done is I've, I brought someone into my community and then I ended up talking with them for a bit. They subbed to me. They no longer subbed to me. I introduced them to someone else through a raid on Twitch. And now they're involved in that community, like super, super close. And so it's like, I gave someone who wanted to tear me down and I gave them best friends to go hang out with. That makes me feel fucking phenomenal. That is my favorite thing in the world. Damn. What a turnaround. So, I've never even heard of a story that so, crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jason, thank you. You're welcome. I appreciate you. Sheesh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty that's, impressive. that's probably my favorite interaction. Yeah, that's okay. What about you, Potato? Mm, I've had definitely interactions that's turned positive. Um, it really depends on what they say. You know, some people troll, and if it's not that you know crazy, I'll just let them be. And usually, they just you know hang around, and it's a good time. It depends what kind of stuff they say, but. Uh, like yesterday, I had a, a very yikes interaction. Um, someone came in and, and said uh, some mean words. And I pulled up to chat and I was like, okay, try again. And they just straight up called me the N-word. So oh, instant Jesus. ban on that one. But I, I tried to like kind of make content out of it. Like just like pull it up and okay, okay, try again. You want to try again? <laughs> and or it, if it's really bad, we just insta ban, of course. But it yeah. also depends on the day. <laughs> Uh, it really depends on my day. If I'm in a bad mood, they just get thrown out immediately. I am very trigger happy, and I, I I would say I time out like five people a stream and maybe ban one or two. Depends. I time out my regulars all the time. It's uh, it's kind of crazy in there sometimes, <laughs> but <laughs> but the regulars get it. They don't care that they get timed out. They just think it's funny, you know. They they take a minute in the bin and then they come back. So it, it really depends on the situation a lot. But yeah, I've had I've had people who's been kind of like semi-rude, semi-trolling, but I've just let them be. And then they've messaged me later saying, thank you for not being mad at me and just letting me be like this little troll hanging mm -hmm. out and being like semi-rude. As long as I understand it's like trolling and they're not trying to be like super toxic, I don't really care. Like... I've been on the internet my entire life and I've I've heard everything at this point, I feel like. So Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. it's it's fun trolling around. And it's if you were if you've been a viewer before, before being a streamer, like I was I was watching Twitch for like a couple of years before I started like three or four years actually before I started streaming. And um yeah, you just understand what it's like to be a viewer. So if you can understand that, like you can understand when people are just having a good time and just you just got to roll with the punches sometimes. And it's mo it's more fun when you're more of an, an established streamer. I feel like initially as a streamer, especially when you have like <laughs> nothing else going on, you tend to deeply care about what others think about you because at least in my situation, like 
you know, you're just you're trying to grow your stream, you're trying to have a positive attitude about it, but deep down you're scared because you're just like, oh shit. Yeah. Like yeah. so any little negative thing can kind of break you in the moment. And so as soon as that's passed, it's so much easier to roll with the punches and just have a good time. There's also yeah. a very common theme of smaller streamers um, not banning people who should be banned just because it's one third of their viewers. It yep. is. Yep. Yeah, that's so a common, that's, common thing. That's a very valuable lesson I learned early yeah. that if people are genuinely toxic, get them the fuck out of there because they're scaring away other viewers that mm -hmm. might want to hang out and be nice. So yes. don't, don't tolerate bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think the best... Yeah, go Sorry, for it. Sorry, go on. No, you. Okay. you. Uh, the best way that I've heard it is that um, everyone has bad days, but most people don't need fourth chances. And I will say I've definitely had my share of people who I probably should have kicked from my community, who are now no longer in my community, who I... It's just... It's so much easier to not have that stress when you're live. Of like, oh, is this person in here? Are they making someone uncomfortable? And it's like, yes, most of the time they are. It's just, yep. it's so not worth it. Yeah, well, one of the things you can kind of pick up on is like you see a name and is that is that Twitch name that you're seeing giving you bad vibes? Like just take it, like just, just think to yourself, like are, would you want to see this person in your chat, appear in your chat right now? And if the answer is no, you probably just got to unapologetically just remove them. And it, what, what's really tough about it is sometimes it's like you're getting a bad vibe and they've done things that are just kind of like borderline. Like, uh, it's like you, I don't actually have like a full on excuse to, you know, tell you the reasons why I want to get you removed from my chat. But you just have to do that for your own like place like i don't know that's what i've felt occasionally is like some people never do anything just really wrong but it's just the constant negativity or something where you're just like, i don't want to yeah. see you in my chat anymore i'm sorry and i i had that experience where i kept a person around for a couple of years <clears throat> and yeah it was just like hit or miss it was like really he i, th I think he was kind of bipolar and mm. you just have like these just sessions of just being a total dick. And I kept letting him back and it was just like, okay. So I eventually just permed him and he's been on like the grind for the past like few months, just remaking accounts and almost like whenever I do go live, it's, it's basically like an 80% chance he's in there with an alt account. It's like always a ban evader, just making up, just making accounts and just sending shit. And it's just like, Jesus Christ. Cause that's a shame. Yeah, he just, I know, it's just brutal. It's like, I, this is clearly why I didn't want you. Like, can you understand why? <laughs> like, just the fact yeah, that you're really doing annoying. this. Like, the yeah. fact that you're making it, like, it was, it's pretty clear why I got rid of you. Yeah. Anyway. I wish, I wish Twitch had additional tools. Because I'm not, like, I'm definitely, I don't have it anywhere close to as bad as some people have like i've heard horror stories of people just endlessly harassing streamers for banning them or getting rid of them and it's just like horrible and the twitch has done a decent job like they've obviously given a few tools but one of the tools they need to do is like if somebody is on like the ban evading thing you need to like shadow ban like there needs to be an option to just fully shadow ban where like they think they're not banned or with creating new alts, but you don't even see it at all. Like nobody sees it because that is something like I would love to see because it's, it always has the message ban evader and yeah. they, they've made a tool where nobody else sees it except for you and the mods. But I wish I didn't even have to like see that at all. I wish it was an option for it. Yeah. Just flip on a switch that and every ban evader gets yeeted. Exactly. But they think they can talk. That, that yeah. that's what youtube do. i love that youtube does that if you hide somebody from your youtube comments they th oh, they don't nice. they don't even know they're hidden but so they'll keep typing and nobody sees it including yourself nobody sees it that so. that would be really helpful i think be. for a lot of people yeah i'm i'm very lucky i don't get much harassment and definitely not anything targeted yeah yeah okay um 
I, you're going to have to explain this to me, guys. Um, Mind Goblin or Hamzy, shout out Hamzy. He's, for, Sid, <laughs> for Sid, he asks, how do you manage to balance IRL with the amount of hours you put into Twitch? And Potato, did you do the ass? <laughs> oh, God. This is a good story, actually. Oh, God. All right. Uh, so, I, uh, yeah, go for it. Go ahead, Potato. <laughs> So this is the story of a very unfortunate misunderstanding. Um, in my previous job, I used to take a ferry to work. And on this ferry, I used to pull up Twitch and watch Twitch on my phone because it was like a 10 minute ride. And this was one of those like really stressful days. I, I, I get there, pull up Twitch and I see Hamsi is live. And I'm like, fuck yeah, I want to watch Hamsi. Of course I do. It's a homie. Um, and I see his title on Twitch is doing underground ass, <laughs> uh, which is a pretty good title, I would say. So I get into his chat, but I, I didn't have audio on yet because I was trying to like hook it up to my Bluetooth in my car and it was a mess. Yeah. And so I didn't really have any audio. So I didn't know what he'd been talking about like the past hour or so. So I just get in and I hear him just playing game and I just go, did you do the ass? Because I thought that was funny play on his title. <laughs> what I didn't know in this moment that <laughs> he oh, had no. been having a very serious conversation with his chat. <laughs> and everyone starts adding me like, what the fuck, Potato? What is wrong with you? Question marking me, <laughs> calling me things. And I'm just like sitting there in my car. What the fuck is going on? What have I done? I don't understand. Oh, no. And I hear Hamsi go, what the fuck, Potato? How can you even ask that? And I'm, I'm so confused. I have no idea what's going on. I'm about to drive up this boat. And it turns out Hamsi has been like telling this deep personal story about how he'd been like together with this woman or something. And apparently she had a boyfriend or something. And he was like pouring his heart out to chat and like having a really deep conversation. I just stroll in like, hey, Hamsi, did you do the ass? <laughs> High five, buddy. <laughs> oh, God. So, yeah. I I oh, had to no. explain that <sighs> underground ass. There has been and everyone was like, yeah. <laughs> that is all. I mean, at least it's Hamzy, so like he's just a king of the trolls. Like he can definitely take it, and that's yeah. that's hilarious. Though there's been a few times where I have been on Twitch Mobile, and there's a conversation going on, but somehow there's just been this nonstop latency that's been building up where I am literally like two minutes behind the live stream oh, yeah. this 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 used to be a very common occurrence years ago when twitch latency was just it was already like 30 seconds behind now they've done a great job of keeping it pretty up to date but yeah i was like two minutes behind and i do, i can't even remember the full story but it was something very similar to that where i asked like a super inappropriate <laughs> question and i i ask it and of course my all I'm seeing in the chat is a bunch of people saying, what the fuck? Or like, why would you yeah. ask that? And I'm like, and I'm watching the live stream. I'm like, are, like, am I even in the right chat? Because I'm two minutes behind. And then the horror crept up as you see, like it coming back to like reality of when you actually type that message and you you start listening. And you're like, oh my God, like I am so far behind and this is so inappropriate. <laughs> yeah, there's been a couple instances of that. Yeah. All Thankfully, right. I already knew Hamsi, so, so... Yeah, that, if you were just a uh, new viewer or something, that's insta-ban, <laughs> just gone. It was after we did the GIM thing, so it was a good time. Okay, that's good. All right, Sid, um, I guess we've already kind of talked about it, but yeah, if you have anything else to... How do you how do you manage the balance? Uh, yeah, again, manage is a great <laughs> goal. <laughs> to manage... Um, <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's it can be very, very difficult. Um, I think the best thing that I ever did was change my schedule. So I get Sundays off, which I can spend a lot of time either working on stream stuff or just being with my wife. Um, and then Monday I do early streams. Uh, so I did my normal stream this morning for like EU friends. And that usually gives me, then I end about the time when my wife comes home. So I get most of the night with her. And then I take Tuesdays off as well, so I can spend most of the night with her. So I basically get 
all that little block for a little bit more downtime and IRL and making sure that my wife is happy and that house is taken care of and all the IRL stuff that needs to get done gets done. And then I just start up Wednesday as like my wife gets home and I've already started streaming and I don't stop streaming until she's like going to work in the next few hours. So yeah, just, just changing my schedule and trying to make it work as best as possible. Even if I may get less sleep, but trying to keep my normal 50 hours of stream a week, which nice, nice. sometimes I do. Sometimes I am not a morning person or yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I try my best, I guess. I try my best and I want to make my wife happy because at the end of the day, she's who allows me to do what I do, which I'm so thankful for. Like, yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Lion Orion has a question for each of you. First, Potato, been loving your UIM progress, uh, although still a bit salty about your CG RNG. Um, in a world where hardcore UIM existed, would you play it? Ooh, I had mentioned that my version of it. I don't know if that's what he has in mind, but. Yeah, um, I'd definitely try it for sure. I would try it, uh, but it would have to be like an official game mode. Um, yeah. self-imposed restrictions are fun since I did have a snowflake account at one point, but it's very, very difficult to sit and think about your rules constantly over and over again and make sure you don't make mistakes um mm -hmm. so i'd rather just the game restricts me you know um so, yeah sid i've seen you pop up pop up on behemoth chronicles a lot for your spoonage do you ever wish you weren't quite so spoon fed <laughs> um no <laughs> I I will be unapologetic about it because I enjoy being spooned and I am so thankful that I've had so especially with raids I've had such good luck like I, I, I see people pop up with better raids logs every once in a while but this account is so so good at knocking off our hundreds and thousands of hours of grinding because of the luck i would not have it any other way i guess the only thing that i don't enjoy about it is that there's a lot of the times where people just don't care they're like oh you've gone lucky on a lot of this stuff and a lot of all of or i guess it's you've been lucky on all of this stuff that I've seen, but I don't watch you all the time. So you've definitely never gone dry on anything. And so they're no longer happy for me whenever I finish a grind mm -hmm. that I'm like overrate. Like I, I'm ranked 140 something for Callisto and rank 300 something for RDO with no void waker hilt right now and i've been months in the wilderness without a void waker piece and it's it's a grind but i can guarantee that the next time i go live and i'm like man i just want this hilt and they're like oh, you've never gone dry for anything i'm just like that's the only thing that's like a bit frustrating but no i would not change anything about my luck considering i can't change that i have the luck in the first place so I'd rather continue being a spooned account so I can continue to enjoy the game, even if it's at a faster pace than I guess what people might consider deserved. Yeah. See, I was considered pretty spoon fed when I first started streaming. I had a 20k CT bow before I had started streaming and I would bring that up because, you know, it's clearly like a huge thing at the time, but, Fantastic. um, so that was kind of like an like a common thing like wherever I was going a little bit dry people would be like dude you got a 20 a 20 kct but nobody gives a fuck. Um <laughs> and then I went like really dry I went 915 tob without a tob weapon which was oh. just horrifying. 
And then, of course, the mace grind. I think the mace grind really solidified it. All you have to do, really, is just have, like, one iconic grind that you go dry on and you market it well. Not like I tried to market it well, but it seemed like just, just doing something the same every single day for, like, nine months really, like, kind of just in, inevitably markets it itself. But that has basically secured where I've, like, changed, like, the entire dynamic where people are can always be like, man, like Save Eight really suffered here. So like anytime I'm lucky on anything, they don't say like, oh, you're always spoon fed. They always they always go back to the the yeah. mace grind and they're like, okay, like you you deserve this. <laughs> Which is yeah. kind of nice feeling. Jack with his Ellie. Yeah. 12, and now probably the thousand. newer one's gonna be Defy with his enhanced. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Yeah, because yeah. Defy used to be, he used to be like the biggest spoon because he had two Ellie's, you know. Mm -hmm. But now we can feel a little bit worse for him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, now it's no longer, well, you got two Ellie's. You don't deserve any of this. It's like, no, that's not true. Yeah. You did the content. You deserve the drop. You don't get to choose your luck. Yeah, that's the biggest thing. Like, you just have to understand it's a, nobody has the choice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, were you going to say anything, Potato? Uh, no, I was just going to kind of agree with that since I've been really spooned on CG and this account has been absolutely insane with RNG. Um, people are saying the same kind of stuff, but people don't think about that. I, I played a main for five years and that account is like so unlucky. Like I never got anything I wanted on that account. And some people might argue argue that, yeah, it's a main, whatever, you know, you could just buy things, but you still want that, like, dopamine of mm -hmm. getting things and feeling like you're achieving something. Like, um, I was so excited to start raiding on that account, and then this is my log on the main, which is part of why I kind of abandoned it and, oh, and just kind of... <laughs> might have started a UIM. Um, just the... Like, the... I mean... Double <laughs> ball, really? Like that has got to just be. Uh, it's yeah, the exact opposite of mine, pretty much. Yeah, I was like, oh, I can't wait to start raiding, making money. This is where the money's at, and then double elder mold. Oh, no. um, so it, it's. I just remember Ari slash his mall s exclamation mall six and exclamation mall oh, seven in oh, his no. chat, and it's just the mall six clip is him just. <laughs> just like raging out of control because he couldn't believe he didn't have a t-bone he had mall six and then yeah, mall, mall, seven. mall seven is the, just funny because he's it's just total acceptance at that point he's just like oh yep mall seven <laughs> like totally different yeah. totally different uh emotions but just you feel the pain just so this is kind of why also the um is probably a lot funnier for me because i'm actually getting drops for once um That's good, though so, yeah. But people are still going to call me Spoon every time I get something. And you know what? That's fine. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm enjoying my drops. So. Yeah. It's something to live with until you have to suffer somewhere. And you just hope yeah. that you don't suffer pretty much at like Tebow, right? That's the main place. <laughs> <laughs> Chambers is a scam. It's brutal. All right. Here's a topic from Flomple. He asks, Potato, if you could only eat one type of potato for the rest of your <laughs> life what would it be mashed fried grilled tater tots etc i'd honestly think i'd just be very basic and say fries with that one it's just i don't know it's it's very superior to me <laughs> french fries are amazing yeah it would be hard to give up those are you more of like uh I don't know, like a what is what are they called? Like Chris, there's like the waffle fries, and then there's the crisscross. Is that what I'm saying? What am I trying to think? The crinkle, <laughs> crinkle fries. The I actually don't like, know. I've the, never had waffle fries, so maybe oh, that's the new one. Waffle um, fries from Chick Fil A are bomb. We don't They're have really Chick Fil A here, unfortunately. Oh my god. I kind of live in the middle of nowhere with the uh, without any fast food chains, so. That's He's a... gotta mix shit myself for you, you know. Go to a proper restaurant. That's honestly, I'm kind of jealous. It's it's kind of a curse having just 
a billion different fast food just shoved in your face everywhere you go. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's a curse. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's always tempting. It's just like, oh, you could have something really good, but it's just, it's generally it's super unhealthy for you. Yeah, I used to live one year in a different city I was studying and there was like a Burger King like right down the street. That was that was a rough year. <laughs> a very rough year. A rough. Oh my god. Burger Kings here suck. I Really? Burger Kings There just... are no good West Coast Burger what? Kings. Burger come, Kings. Come to Norway and have Burger King. Uh. The thing is is like Burger King actually used to be a decent establishment when I was a kid. Um, it might have just been because my taste buds were different and I just could like anything. But, oh, my God, it is, it's bad now. Like it's, And it also, you just got to keep in mind, like, there's so much competition for fast food out here that, like, you're comparing just hundreds of different places to each other. And there's yeah. inevitably going to be just way better options. And Burger King's just way down on the list. I, I have not eaten at Burger King in, like, three years. Same. Like here, um, I've only been to like McDonald's and Burger King. Those are like the two places I've been mm. to. Um, and here the McDonald's is way worse in my opinion. Um, mm. But maybe there's even better fast food options. I just haven't had them. And maybe I'm just comparing McDonald's to Burger King in this area. But yeah. Yeah, there we, we got some pretty good places around here. There we uh, I don't know if you ever heard of In-N-Out. Um, but they have an in and out like an, well, it's like a couple cities north from me, but we went there cause my little brother's here for the summer and we drove over to like the Tillamook cheese factory. And then on the way back, uh, hit up in and out and man, I have, I forgot how good in and out is. I love, I, I, I don't like the fries, but the burgers, they're cheap and amazing. I love them. There's something about the, the consistency of in and out. It's that so, I love. Yeah, it's just, it's always consistent. It's even hot, if it's not dude. the best burger, you get an animal <laughs> animal style burger at In and Out, and you know exactly what you're getting every single time, and it's cheap. Yep. And that yeah. is, I mean, I'm I'm a California native, so now I live in Washington State, but yeah, I I do miss In and Out just because the cheap consistency. Of a decent smash burger. There's yeah. a couple nice smash burger places where I am now, but none of them are like they're all double, triple the price of an In-N-Out smash yeah. burger. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I'll note that down if I ever come to the U.S. I gotta try yeah. In-N-Out. Oh yeah, it's, that, that's it's iconic. not the best, but, but it's worth trying. And yeah, yeah, I would say it's actually among the best for the value. I would for say the it's value like, I absolutely. I would say yeah. it's like basically the best for value because yeah um yeah if you and, and you will probably honestly like i don't know if you've i feel like in and out's been in like several movies and stuff like i feel like if you saw the restaurant you would just be like oh that's like iconic like american diner kind of like vibes hmm. to it but maybe um, yeah okay and they also pay their employees really well which is <laughs> that's super <good>. great <laughs> that they're like really they're very intent on paying like all their employees a very, very livable wage wherever they are. Hmm. That's nice. Yeah. That's a whole hot topic these days. Which is literally, yeah. yeah. Um, what would you what would you guys say is your like your go to meal or like your fate like if you could just have a meal that's like this is you know I don't know. A go to I don't want to say like absolute favorite because that, that tends to be a scary question because there's so many like you you don't want to live off something, but yeah, I, I, it, it really depends on my mood a lot, but I, I have like a go-to taco that I, I get. So what is it? Is it, is it so, um, soft shell or hard shell? Uh, it depends on my mood. Cause these tacos I usually make myself cause there isn't mm -hmm. really a taco place here. Mm -hmm. But what do you <laughs> but put like, in it? Oh boy. <laughs> um, I'm, a, I'm a very simple person. I, I make homemade uh, guac. I put that in, in the bottom. Ooh, yeah. And then I usually have some sort of ground beef with some spices in it uh, that I put. A lot of cheese. Cheese is very important to me. Um, I also put corn, um, which a lot of people don't like, but that's okay. Some lettuce and, you know, maybe some salsa on top. That's that, sounds, my that sounds great. Yeah. 
Do you uh, get flour tortillas or corn? Usually flour. You know what's really good is homemade flour tortillas. My mom used to make those when I was a kid. I've never tried those. Yeah, like, I mean, homemade. obviously everyone's would be different if they're homemade, but like there's something about like a hot, fresh tortilla coming right out. Especially when you can get uh, like some actual lard to make the tortillas. Oh, is is yeah, mm -hmm. I, I never made them myself, so. Yeah, um, there's a Mexican market not very far from where I live and it, yeah. If you can find a place to get like actual lard to make like real, real good tortillas, it is 100% worth it. I've really gotten into like soft tortillas lately. They're like, um, like not to wrap them like a burrito, but just like it looks like a normal taco yeah, shell, yeah, just yeah. soft. Yeah. See that yeah. that's what a real taco is is a soft shell. With but I grew up in obviously United States where like my growing up I thought a taco was a hard shell like supermarket taco. Like I thought that was a taco yeah. and everything else was. Yeah. Same. Yeah. <laughs> So, but yeah, the original taco is like a soft, you know, either corn or flour tortilla. But I always prefer like the shell shape more yeah, than yeah, the yeah. burrito of shape, course. personally. But I feel like I get a lot of hate for that because Norwegian taco is a very popular thing. Like it's, uh, I think Norway is like the most taco of like almost any country except like Mexico or something. Um, per really? like person. <laughs> so... A lot of people just always make it a burrito. They call it taco, but they make it a burrito. Mm. Oh. So I feel always weird because I'm the one who's like, uh, do you have like a shell or like a soft taco? And they're like, no, tortilla burrito only. I'm like, okay. Hmm. Uh, yeah, what about you, Sid? Go-to meal. Um, My go-to meal. I make a really good quesadilla. Ooh. And I will, I will throw either like chicken that my wife or I have marinated, or I will make. Yeah, I'll usually go with like a garlic salsa, and chicken, and just a nice quesadilla, which is probably one of the issues with you know my current waistline. <laughs> but, <laughs> I don't know. I I fuck hard with a good quesadilla. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Well, if you're not going to grow upwards, it's, at least you can grow outwards. Yeah, it's it's a, <laughs> it's a one of my major things that I'm like, okay, this is quick. It's something that I can have that's filling, yep. and I'm not going to need to eat for literally the rest of the day. And it's just tasty as fuck. Yeah, homemade, homemade quesadillas with just any sort of like cheese and meat. Like, they slap. Like, they actually yep. slap. Yeah are good yeah i'm kind of like a like anything seafood like you just give me anything seafood mm. i'm i'm all about that yeah. i'm not that big any, on seafood i like fish though yeah it, i mean it really depends because i mean seafood if it's not fresh or if you get bad seafood or it's, it's like it's horrible it's the worst oh. thing ever but if you get like really fresh seafood it's I think it's also part of that I, I grew up with parents who think salt is seasoning. So it, <laughs> I feel like I haven't really tasted like pr proper seafood before. It's mm, been like salt yeah. and pepper my entire life. So maybe I'll change my mind eventually if I taste something really fucking good. But, um, but yeah, salt, if, if salt and pepper is a good start. <laughs> I feel like as long as you are not against textures, like there's people that are really mm -hmm. like, they'll get turned off just by like a texture thing, like super. As long easy. as like, it's not mushy, I'm fine with it. Like mushrooms, sorry, they they have to be really small. Like yeah, there, there's a lot of them. seafood that's like mushroom consistency. Oh so I god, would, I would be yeah. But I mean, yeah, I'm always open to trying. Yeah. Um. So, what are your thoughts on bananas? Do you like bananas? I don't like bananas, but that's mostly because I had these like tablet things that I had as a kid that tasted banana and oh. they just ruined bananas for me. Shit. Yeah. So, but the texture is fine. What are your thoughts on olives? 
No, fuck those. Fuck those. I don't like olives. What about you, sir? Not the streamer, though. The streamer's Black, good. The streamer's good. Olive Black is an olives amazing guy, by the way. That dude is the just the happiest, like, he's olives, just, he's great. He seems like one of the most fun people to ever be around. He is so. In any situation. He is. That's, dude, like, it's, it's way beyond like his streaming like he he's the same guy streaming and whatnot but like when you actually see him in person he's so genuine and so freaking nice and just that's great great vibes all the time yeah, yeah. He's, he's awesome yeah i i don't like green olives I, I i fuck heavy with some black olives depending on what i'm having them with so if it's like olives mm. on like a veggie pizza or something. I'm totally fine with that. Mm. You give me green olives, I I'm not your friend anymore. <laughs> you know what? It's, you know what? Of, um, yeah, go for it. There's a lot of like food related streamers. I feel like, and the I don't know. Like with their in their names. <laughs> yeah, in their names or their like, I don't know brand. I guess it's easier to have that <laughs> as a topic. I don't know. <laughs> Olive, Zoe Pancakes, Potato Hime. Who else? Yeah. Radish Boy. Radish yeah. Boy, yeah. It's a bunch. Hopefully not Whale. <laughs> Bodhi, Bodhi's cringing right now. Um, yeah, uh, one of the biggest abominations you can ever do is put raisins in like a pastry or something or like banana bread or something. It's like, what, what are you... Or a cookie... I'm sorry. Don't put raisins in my stuff. Don't. Just don't. The do worst it. is when you think it's chocolate chip and then oh, you get disappointed. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It makes my blood boil. I'm okay <laughs> with raisins, but I will never go out of my way to have them in anything. Yeah, I basically look it's, if like if there's raisins in something, I'm like I'm passing. Like it's it's literally not worth the calories at that point. It's just nope. <laughs> I only put raisins oh. on on porridge. That's the only place I put raisins. Oh God! Oh no! Yep. Yeah, I can't do that. Yeah, like I, I'm not going to absolutely like just vomit or anything. Like I'll eat occasionally. Like I've had trail mix and stuff with raisins, but I'm like, please just don't. I would so much rather have like dried cranberries or cherries instead. Ex yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. I'm I'm totally with you there. Yeah. Okay, so we didn't actually even talk about this, but just earlier today, I guess for me and you, said, uh, and yesterday for you, Potato, um, Jagex decided to scrap the Ruinous Powers prayer book entirely. Yeah, yeah I heard about that. You know, oh, what, thank God. Thank God. <laughs> I know, it's not I'm good. happy. <laughs> I know. It's, it's actually crazy because when the blog post first came out, I was like... <gasps> People are going to be kind of butthurt about this, but literally almost every single person was like, thank goodness, like you guys just scrapped this. So that was actually kind of a relief knowing that so many people were thinking similar thoughts. Yeah. Because yeah. when that first came out, I was like, fuck, now I got to learn new metas I and I got to... I gotta theory craft this. I gotta think about this. I just want to click my tiles. So please, Jagex. Uh, That's, so. Yeah. That it's seriously like such a scary thing is like knowing that this really will be like you're basically trolling if you're using standard prayer book. That's the worry is like, oh, you're using standard prayer book. All right, noob. Like you, you basically <laughs> have to adapt to this new thing that we've all gotten used to for 20 years. Yeah. Like for me, it was just too much at once because like they're already adding four new bosses. We're getting some sort of gear progression whether it's up or down or side to side i don't i don't care the fact that we're gonna have ring switches great that's that's good enough for me we're probably gonna have some ring switches and raids i don't want to have to relearn every single piece of content for whatever new meta is coming up it's yep. it's just too much for me it's it's a lot i kind of I kinda hope there would be more like skilling prayers when they first announced a new prayer book like if they were gonna go in a direction i thought they would focus more on me maybe some skilling stuff but i don't know if people would want that either yeah I'm... the what, what i noticed is when you really start 
thinking about a utility prayer book or things that are kind of more skilling focused, so much of it ends up going down the same route of like, okay, yeah. almost everything changes now. Like every single thing you have to do, you have to turn on the prayer, you have to do this, or it's just really yeah. tough. It's tough to make like something that feels good to use. Yeah. Yeah, we don't want to end up like RuneScape 3 where you need like 50 items to feel like you're efficient. Exactly. Absolutely not. Yeah. Exactly. For me, I was like, why don't... I, I've always been just like, why not add four new... If we really want new prayers, we can add four new balanced prayers, like Kurs, Vow, Glacies, Vow, stuff like that. We can have that be really niche things and add those. Because there's plenty of room on the spell book currently, or on the prayer book currently. Yeah, six more slots we could add. Yeah, so I, I would be down for some new stuff coming from the new bosses, but not just prayer book to electric boogaloo. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Especially because it was basically identical to the normal yeah. one, just more. Yeah, okay. that's <laughs> and there's just so many. Worse. There's so many things that you have to have from the current prayer book that if you don't have, you're gated from content. Exactly. That's yeah. what, like, they had made so many changes. They had basically oh, just God, made yeah. redemption on there because the redemption is used in so many situations now. And not could having you, it feels bad. Could you have even done? I, I, I haven't seen much of people using what were going to be the beta prayers but could you even do cms without like well you couldn't ancient... originally like if you're doing a solo cm like the tightrope skip was like like you couldn't do it initially but then they made a the prayer just act exactly like redemption so then oh, it, you could okay. but then that ended up just being like why are we even making why? a new prayer book yeah <laughs> okay that that's kind of what i thought i was just like i don't because that's the one place that i know that like yeah. so many people use redemption if it's not going to be doing thermi right and mm -hmm. who cares about thermi tech like no one's <laughs> no one's going to clamor my new prayer book ruins my thermi tech but there's like one dude really angry in the comments right now <laughs> like, really pissed off shut up that guy <laughs> Like one thing that would be really nice, and I have been asking for this for a, for years actually, is like one is like Augury honestly could get in a little upgrade and give it a little bit of mage damage boost. Um, I I'm if I start talking about like the mage damage, it's like I would actually like a little bit of rebalancing. I think a cult is just super OP, ten percent. Like that could literally like be kind of rebalanced to maybe like 7% or something and then give like eternal boots a percent. This would be like a whole rebalancing thing that I would personally like. I know not everyone would agree with it, but like that would be nice if that had a little bit of a boost. It would be nice to have like when Tob was being released, they were talking about a, a prayer called Judgment. Their idea was a little bit different, but I was thinking something like Piety, except it's just accuracy, which Ruinous Powers was offering uh, like an accuracy only prayer. Like, that would be really nice. Is like, something that's, like, no strength added, but just huge accuracy buff, so you just hit your hammers and stuff. Just just for that first hammer at Corp. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Yeah. yeah what do you I... mean? You don't like resetting Tekton over and over again in a CM? Dude. <laughs> I, wish, I wish I was playing before, or even at Tob release. Because I, I started playing after Tom, pretty much. So I never got to experience what most people consider, like, the golden days of mm -hmm. PVM. Mm -hmm. And I really, I feel like I definitely missed out on that. Yeah, I've dude, heard so many stories of just, oh, this is the best time to be an old school RuneScape player. 2018 was an incredible year. And... 27 inferno release was crazy that was a crazy release ne neither of you guys were there or i guess potato i was there yeah. but uh, I, I was too much of a new player to even attempt inferno back then oh yeah but i wasn't I... I didn't attempt it for like you know like 10 months afterward but just watching it i was like yeah Bro, was this, insane. this game is evolving quick like this shit is hard yeah. I would still say Inferno is probably one of the best content that's ever been released to this game. It's it's so much fun. 
it's so amazing because to this day, even after six years, it still holds such a status symbol. Like, just okay, this is the Inferno Cape. This is like end game. It's just a beastly cape. The content is so well balanced and designed, and it feels good to get a completion. And like, it's like getting your first Infernal Cape, even to this day, is just an incredible feeling of like, okay, I can do this. Like, I can do hard content in this game. And in yeah. Inferno, is kind of where I realized <laughs> my skill gap. That's kind of where I realized how bad i am at the game uh like i i kind of understood the skill ceiling of how insane other people can be when it comes to content i didn't really un fully understand it before but after that i kind of <laughs> it kind of clicked for me that fuck me shit i'm very average <laughs> i do not have my infernal cape because i've sent less than 20 attempts total and I've been so focused on what I was doing. I started the Infernal Grind and then I quickly realized I don't enjoy this because <laughs> I'm so much of a perfectionist and I'm not immediately flawless at it. Yep. And I need to buckle down and get it done because like it's I've always maintained I'm bad at the game. I will say I'm okay at the game when I have my Infernal Cape. And I can do a lot of content in this game. Clicking without missing half my clicks is not something that's good. So maybe one day I will find the love of Inferno and I can appreciate how crazy it is. The tech that people use, especially nowadays, like that speed running has gotten so so it's, cool it's with their out strats. Of control. It's out it's of control. It's so wild to watch it. I fuck. I, I love it. I love it. Yeah. And then I'm like, let me try, and I get to wave 55, <laughs> and I'm like, nope, I misclicked three times in a row in a bed. Fuck. It's it's actually like so depressing seeing how insane people are. And you're like, Inferno looks easy, and then you actually like go in there because like I'm still very. I mean, I've I've completed the CAs and stuff because I just, uh, you know, I can. I've obviously played this game for just almost 20,000 hours so eventually you just get to the point where you can m m do most things if you just put in enough time uh i will say though like inferno's never like been fun necessarily to me it's it's fun because like of the feeling you get throughout it and like obviously triple jads i really enjoy and the zuck fight itself but like going through the waves isn't like particularly fun for me yeah. but i think just it just feeling. feels very good when you accomplish something that you find difficult yes yeah that's, that makes sense yeah Absolutely. because the start of inferno for me was like just learning what what does these monsters do and then it's you know the depression phase of you being like why can't i get past wave 30 what's wrong with me mm -hmm. and then you start like actually getting through the waves and that's that feeling of accomplishment is pretty fucking good <laughs> yeah you, I just you, need to bash my face against it for a few days straight. I just don't want to send any attempts off stream. And I'm so not motivated to prep a stream and start with Inferno and then be like sad with myself for not progressing as far as I know I can. Because mm -hmm. I, I know I can eventually get it. Yep. But for me, it's the do I want to sit down and do it while at the same time having every single person in chat be in the rear view mirror. And sometimes I'm okay with the back seating. Sometimes I'm like, Hey, how do I do this? And then people are just talking to themselves and I'm like, where the hell are the back seaters now? <laughs> <laughs> I've never been angrier than when I streamed oh. Inferno. Cause I streamed every <laughs> single attempt and yeah. holy shit. Some people just come crawling out of their walls. Like, where have you been? I've never oh, seen you before. They, Why are you telling me to want to flick? Like, what the fuck? Go, go away. <laughs> they see Inferno on your thumbnail on your live yep. stream and they just pop in. Yeah, it's just. Yeah. Oh, my God. The and then they disappear once you get the cape. <laughs> oh, yeah, they're gone. Yeah. Yeah. The Zuck professional and the Zuck expert emotes are absolute <laughs> S tier. <laughs> Zuck expert 1KC, so Zuck professional 2KC. Oh, <laughs> so good. Yeah. 
It, one of the most like addicting streams to watch is Scotty doing his like he's insane dude he is just so good like disgustingly good and it just he just makes it look so easy he goes in there he got a 41 like 35 <laughs> like bruh oh my God. like yeah. i so i had to go get the sub 65 minute i was just trying my very hardest to zoom in there i got like 63 30 Dude did it 20 minutes faster than me. <laughs> like, what the? What, where did the 20 <laughs> minutes come from? Literally how? <laughs> it's crazy. Like, my, my first game took three hours. I kept taking breaks. I was, like, mm -hmm. checking my fridge. I was going to the toilet. I was just, like, yep, taking yep. all the breaks in the world during that cape. Yeah. My my That's first game was, yeah, probably, like, in, probably like two hours. Just, just taking my dear sweet time. Milking SGSs, you know, just chilling. I'm just in awe of speedrunning, I guess, in general. Like, I, I watch a decent amount of speedrunning. That's pretty much most of the category of stuff that I watch outside of OSRS is speedrunning. Mm -hmm. And so seeing that we have gamers like Scotty and Mulga Kirby and No Monkey and Noob Type, mm -hmm. it's just, oh my god. There's so many people who are so incredible at this game. It's just like, man... I wish I was bad. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude, it's it's weird because like you actually hear their stories. Like they didn't just spawn good. Like yeah, no no monkey himself. It's... Like he was literally saying he was a total noob, total noob. And guess what? He just decided like he wants to be really good. So that's what he put all his time into was just learning and getting good. Like failing, failing, failing a million times and like just getting better. And like I wouldn't consider myself among the best. Not at by any standard like but i'm decent enough to you know get us a comment at least and do these things but i used to be total dog shit like so horrible at this game i just obviously you know it's different when you can just play all day <laughs> and like learn <laughs> is it's different but like if if you are a neat you know and you're just playing this game anyway like you can really get really good at this but you have to push yourself that's the yeah. difference is you have to have the desire and you have to like go out there and put yourself in really uncomfortable situations. That's something I can do in game. I just can't do it in real life. I can't put myself in that uncomfortable <laughs> I feel like Fair. I always tell my chat mood. that if I can get an Inferno cape, you can get one yeah. because, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That makes sense. I mean, the hard work shows. They're... Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and people that get to, like, Scotty's level, like, Scotty does those every day. Like, he grinds. He's always implementing something new he's trying to look at what he can improve on and it's just that daily grind of like yeah i want to get better i want to get better i want to get better so yeah it shows so hard yeah um uh, yeah it's it's i was gonna say exact but yeah exact hasn't been on the scene for a while but like his 40 combat inferno was oh just unbelievable for the time still is but yeah. Yep. Um, what are you guys' thoughts on sailing? Oh, we're going there, huh? <laughs> we I, for me, I am cautiously optimistic. Um, I think the right people are developing it, so I think. Elena and Husky are the right people to do it. And I I like where it's going so far. I like seeing things fleshed out. I don't know. I don't think I'll ever be able to know how much I'll personally enjoy the gameplay loop without trying it. So, I... Yeah, I'm cautiously optimistic. I'm kind of in the same, same boat. Yeah. Um, <laughs> both puns anyway um i'm i'm the same with like introducing new things to the game like it's very hard to know how fun it's gonna be until you try it like i've always been like a hands-on kind of person like you could pitch the idea of like i don't know irby board to me and i'd be like hmm, maybe that sounds fun but i don't know until i actually play it or try it mm -hmm. so it's gonna be very hard to make an up on a decision on it 
but I am positive for it for now. Yeah. But you never know. Like it, it, it's it's not like you can say definitely. Oh yes, I'm all in, or no, absolutely not. It's like a is a floating variable on these things, depending on what choices gets made. When they initially proposed the three skill pitches, which ones were you guys wanting the most? Sailing I voted shamanism. Okay. I I was pretty. I was like sailing sixty percent, shamanism forty percent. If we're gonna get a new skill. And I was assuming that we were going to get a new skill. Yeah. Because. Yeah. I wasn't yeah. sailing for the second one. So. It's yeah. funny because like I, I was actually initially leaning taming. And then their pitch was just so depressing that I was like, okay, <laughs> never mind. I didn't I like might, taming because I felt it devalued pets. I might have a hot take when it comes to taming. <gasps> I think taming would have been the least enjoyable for me. But I think it would have been the best to market for new players in the game. And I know a lot of people don't care about catering to bringing in new people for the game, but you have to for the health of the game. MMOs die when they don't have at least some new people to try stuff. And I think taming would have marketed really well, but I also think Jagex does terrible marketing for their game. The so problem I would have been yeah go on the problem with taming is like we have we are in such a dilemma between like not wanting power creep not wanting any of these pets to have anything to do with combat so then you just have it where it's like you're like they were literally marketing it as like you go to your little pet training center and train your monsters or like you know get them to level I, I don't even know it was just like so yeah. pointless because like what are they even doing because they can't help you in combat it's like tamagotchis yeah, fun. Like, I, I think they could help you in skilling which is kind of interesting i think that would have been you know an interesting route to go down but just the way like it they they did not market that as well at all yeah. they didn't give a good pitch for it but that's when i stopped leaning on it and then i was like full-on team sailing for the most part yeah i would still like to see what the in-depth look at shamanism would look like because i think it could be interesting but i think it's it's such a hard line to balance across before shamanism might be something that gets too close to invention or too close to just power just straight up power creep on everything mm-hmm and so yeah. that's what worried me, I think, the most and why I was like, I think I'd rather just see the pitch for sailing. And I'm happy with the pitch for sailing for the most part, but I don't know. I just don't know how much I'd enjoy it. Yep. Um, Forestry is coming out in a week. What are you guys, yeah. what are you guys thinking about that? Are you excited? I'm very neutral to forestry. Like, I'm happy to see more skilling things coming into the game. Um, but I, as I've said before, I have no idea until it comes, until we decide if we hate it or not, <laughs> but, but, uh, I'm, I'm mostly positive for it. I think it's going to be fun to see how people react to it too. Yeah. Sid? Um, so I used to do nothing but merch and woodcut and I've done enough woodcutting to never want to do more wood cutting again. It is my currently lowest skill on my Iron Man. I do not enjoy it. If it changes in a way to make it better, I'm all for it. So, I'm I'm happy that it's going to get something. I will be excited to do if someone forces me to do a skilling stream for a bunch of channel points when forestry comes out, I will make a stream out of it. I don't expect it to make wood cutting my favorite thing in the world i think but. the main concept is good I, I i'm excited to see when it actually comes out because i'm with you potato where it's like i just it's yeah. gotta come out I it's hard to picture it, it. yeah exactly. i'm kind of worried that it's gonna be like guardians of the rift though yeah this might be a hot take for some but i fucking hate guardians of the rift fuck that place um and the reason i hate it so much is because it has a fucked balance between being afk and being active 
Like if I look away for three seconds, I'm missing a portal or something. And it's just it's, it's, a, it's a weird balance for me personally. That's why mm. I don't like it. So I'm kind of afraid that forestry might be the same way. Um, with this weird like time balance in my head. But I'm I'm hoping for the best because I really I remember like the back in the day when you know trees became alive and you know oh, fucked yeah. up your axes and ate your friends and things like that. Um, and that was that was a fun childhood memory. I kind of wish they would bring that back, but but <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Yeah, the the main point of it seems cool, like where you're not punished for cutting trees Other with friends. People. Exactly. I like that. Yeah, I've, uh, I've I've even been thinking like like for Sebe cast, I always am doing some skilling in the background, and what would be cool is to, like if my guest wants to do forestry, we could do we could chop trees together. I mean, I could definitely <laughs> mine amethyst with you right now. <laughs> yeah, I, I mined enough amethyst. I got twenty thousand amethyst arrows. So I'm chilling, oh, but I did I did do that for like three Sebe casts straight a while back. Yeah. I don't know. I, I personally love Guardians of the Rift, but it's maybe because I don't... I don't know. I don't know if you do small teams, but I do not do masses for Winter Todd. I don't do masses for Guardians of the Rift. So I, I love small team Guardians of the Rift. It is mega chill with, I'd say, two to ten people because it's such a predictable thing that there's never a time where you're not knowing exactly when everyone needs to do everything. So there's no, like, I look away for three seconds and I miss a portal, at least for me. Yeah. yeah I, I don't know. I liked, I actually liked the balance of Guardians of the Rift where it's like, you guarantee two minutes of just straight up AFK and then you got to yeah. zoom for a little bit and then go back. I like that in the mass worlds. I only did it for like four days though. So and I was really motivated at the time because I just wanted to test out some rune crafting methods with the outfit. So I just literally no life did for four days. I'm just one of those weirdos who who like say oh, blood rune crafting. I guess no, <laughs> I, mean, I don't even think that's it's weird it. to like it's that. Great. Yeah, I I did that on my main for three months straight um, to get to 99 rune crafting, and I enjoyed every bit of it. And uh, I don't know, maybe I maybe I just like that more than. Guardians of the Rift. Like, I'm not shaming Guardians of the Rift. Like, it's, it's a great mini game. It's really good for early game irons of any kind, and and it gives really, really great rewards. And I've pretty much solved the rune issue for Iron Man early game. So, yeah. Um. So it's it's overall a good thing. It's just me personally who's being a little whiny bitch about it. So yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm not. I'm not like. Oh, I want to go do Guardians of the Rift. In fact, that's like the last <laughs> thing on my mind. But it's. Yeah. I have to just say, it's like, okay, it's. It it yeah. filled its needs, like it filled its role, like really nicely, and everything. Yeah, like you you can you can say that something is good for the game, but also not personally enjoy doing it. Yeah, I oh, agree yeah. with that. I agree. I I much prefer just doing traditional RC, like through Abyss or something. Like I love like the nostalgia to that and just a repetitive I... motion like that. See, I want to get. I I've never maxed an account ever. The, I think my current iron is it's 2173 total it's the highest total account i've ever had um but i want to unlock the true blood altar because the regular rift guardian pet is so so much better and i love having pets i've been very lucky with pets and i want the actual like just regular rune crafting pet so that is like my goal is I've pretty much completed most of the log. I got the pet of Guardians of the Rift and now I want to get my agility up and eventually get the regular rune crafting pet as well. And that'll make me happy. So I'll just do true blood altar forever. Yeah, you get a ton of blood runes per hour now. It's really nice. Yeah. Yeah. What are you guys' favorite pets? Ooh, muted on. I don't have it myself, but I really want it. It's cute. That's a great question. I love my small Kano. Small Kano is one of the pets that I wanted desperately on my on every hardcore that I've ever had, and I finally got it on this hardcore. Um, it might be Vedion Junior. Vedion's dope. That was my favorite. I think actually that's still currently my favorite pet that I own. 
Yeah. Vedion Jr. Hydra's really far up there. And then all the dusted raids pets are amazing. Mm -hmm. But I think either Vedion Jr. or Hydra. Dude, that Zebak pet, that little flat boy. Zebo. <laughs> yeah. I have a weird thing where if I call a follower, I get a little tiny Zebo that follows me. No oh. matter where I am. I don't right here. Like I can just post that. I have it following me. I can talk to it. I can try and pick it up and it just immediately disappears. Wait, I, what? When like, I wait, wait, like you, like you own it or you don't own it. No, nope, I don't own it. When I try and metamorphosize it, <laughs> it gives me a weird message in chat saying, sadly, the transmog for this pet is awaiting a rune light fix to work correctly. When I examine huh. it, it works. But when I try and pick it up, it immediately disappears. I can have two pets out at once, and I don't know why. What the fuck? Oh, but it's been this way for the past it? couple patches. Heck no, it's a free pet. <laughs> that is <laughs> wait, that's not. funny. Yeah, huh. I've, I've heard there's like some double pet glitch things. I, I, yeah. I've never done it myself. I've seen people in my stream like just come up with like two pets and stuff. Yeah. There's also this bug recently that if someone teleports away with a pet, it just chills there. Stays you know? there forever. Yeah, yeah. I, see, I see pets all, all over the fucking place and they're just hanging out. I yeah. think it's cool, but like, what? why? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I really yeah. like my, my um, hunt life on my UIM. It's my only pet on this account so far, so I really like that one. I think Hunlift would have been a better pet if it didn't have an underglow. I don't like... I, I don't like how, like, when you zoom out, it just kind of looks like a blue blob. Oh, yeah. yeah it would look yeah. more distinct if it just... There. You could see I also kind of wish you could use, like, the, the recoloring crystals on it. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. That's genius. See, I think my favorite pet that I don't own is Muffin. I really want a little salary slug. That would be cool. I, like, that's the one thing that... Makes me think, you know what? Maybe I will get eight crystal crowns if I go super dry at Muspa. If there's one pet I really want to grind out, it's the Penance Queen. That one seems so brutal to grind out. A yeah, but it's VA also rate. so fucking cool. <laughs> I have two people in my community who got it under 10 KC. I'm just like, what? you... One person got it at 1 KC. What? And it's just... They're just oh, like, I will God. never do another high gamble. I don't care about any part of BA forever. And I'm like, you motherfucker. <laughs> I'm just glad I got my Cree pet at like 1400 or something. Like that pet always seems so unobtainable. Just something that's like, no, I'll never have that. And then I randomly got it. And I'm like, oh my God. Like I'm a Cree pet owner. Let's fucking go. Not <laughs> Yeah, that's a sick pet. Um, yeah, I just I just got Vorky uh, last week, so I'm at 30 pets now, which is really cool. Oh, yeah, I've never, I saw that clip. Yeah, I've, ne I've, I've never been a pet hunter, so like all of them have pretty much come passively. Like obviously, I've done a ton of content, but yeah. now I'm kind of like, ooh, I kind of want 40 now. I'm One waiting. Of the, uh... Oh, go ahead. Okay. Um, I'm waiting until I like finish like my current grind on the iron is best in slot PVM gear. And then as soon as I finish that, then I go pet hunting. Mm. And so all of my pets are just passive right now. And how many do you have? 13. Yeah. That's, that's really good. If you've never, For, yeah. yeah. In a year and a half too. Like I, I cannot complain. <laughs> yeah. I kind of didn't go for pets at all on my main. I got five. Uh, to max and uh, after I maxed I actually tried to go for a few pets I tried to go for baby mole and kraken because I thought maybe they were like some of the easier ones and I'm dry on both and never got them so <laughs> I just kind of gave up uh, on that thing <laughs> baby mole was the first and only pet slash collection log pop-up I ever got on mobile oh on mobile Nice. I got it like, uh, I don't know, six months ago or something. I literally logged in on mobile the one night. Just I never go on mobile ever, but I was just like, fuck it. I'll just go and kill like a few mole on mobile because that sounds easy. And I got the pet like five kills. I was like, okay. I was like 2,600 KC. My little flat boy. I... Yeah, I like the pancake. 
Yeah, a little pancake. Pancake is good. And I, I like my... that you can make him naked now. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> I have my pancake. It's my most spooned pet. Did I just it... hear your cat? Very. Yeah, yeah, she's like, right when he said pancake, it meowed. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's she's mad that my wife went to sleep and closed the door. <laughs> Hi. Yeah. Yeah, she's an absolute menace. I love this cat so much. She is absolutely a little COVID kitty who has issues when I leave, but she's so loving. But yeah, I wish in-game I... pets. I got my mole at 11 KC. Yeah, that's I just nice. wanted to do CAs. I was like, all right, I'm just going to finish off everything in the Elite CAs and... I'm going to start from scratch, and then I got Mole. I was like, oh, well, I guess I'm not getting more than 50 KC ever. Okay. Um, Hamster asks, thoughts on a new league or rehash of an old one? Are you guys league players? Like, old school RuneScape league? Yes. Semi. Semi player. Yeah, I, I think I'm, I'm not. I think the first time you ever came into my chat save it was when you when i was doing nightmare on mm -hmm. leagues two it yep. was right after me and my buddy were doing nightmare on leagues two and he got a jar which didn't count for anything and then he got a back-to-back -back jar at one and two kc and i think you were in there <laughs> like 20 minutes later and he was so frustrated that it didn't count for a damn thing I think I remember that. <laughs> Something about jar. Oh my god. Yeah. Can you imagine? That was, the, that? that was the first time I think you were in my chat. Is I was just seshing nightmare and my buddy comes in, one KC jar, two KC jar, and he's like, motherfucker. That is so unreal. It's it's actually like really it's weird so <sighs> when when somebody gets something rare and it's like they they almost are just freaking out at like just that wasn't what they want, but they're not realizing how incredibly rare that is to happen. <laughs> yeah. It's just like all the rage is built up from just like, what the fuck? Yeah. Yeah. There, there yeah. Was... I, uh, yeah go I, for I it. enjoyed League. Um, like, I, I was too late for the first one, the Seiya one. Um, so I didn't really get to experience that one, which I'm kind of bummed about. The second one, I joined a lot, but um, I, I'm the kind of person who plays for like two, three weeks, and then I'm like, well, this was fun, back to the main. Um, and that's it, pretty much. I never really tried like late game league stuff, because there's something in the back of my head that says your XP wasting on your actual account that matters. Yep. Mm -hmm. right, that's what I feel. It, it's not even just the XP waste, it's also the idea that like this account's getting deleted. In a few weeks and i'm like Ugh. yeah it's like fun to play around with a little bit like for a few days and then you know yeah jump back. yeah what they Getting need pets on leagues sucks <laughs> i want to see feels great and awful yeah it, it, i've seen people get third age as well on leagues. i'm just like oh fuck that would suck especially there was um was it casey that got like a bloodhound on leagues one uh -huh. where like the yeah that was horrifying <laughs> Poor Casey. Yeah. Um, I would love to see a Benjamin Button mode league where everyone starts off on Tutorial Island. Or, no, sorry, everyone starts in Lumberge maxed. And the whole goal of it is to lose XP. So every time you are supposed to gain XP, you lose it. But oh. you have to strategically level yourself down to level one, all stats. But as you level down, also, you can't tr train at certain levels. It's like as soon as you get below you know, 90 agility, then you can't do arty anymore and you have to go down. So it's like Benjamin Button mode. <laughs> it's super masochistic. I don't think anyone would actually enjoy it. But Someone would... goes in and tries to do Inferno and then suddenly they can't use their Tebow because they <laughs> eat too much. Yeah. Or, <laughs> that would or, be hilarious. Or like even worse is like somebody's like AFK Sand Crabs gets down to like really low combat and like, oh shit, I'm still 99 Slayer. Fuck. And so they ha they're having to just like grind with like basically one stats trying to <laughs> level down their slayer. You'd have to do you have to be very strategic with it, but it'd be fun to like see the because you'd actually like respect those really low level people. You'd walk around like holy shit, like your stats are so low, like damn. <laughs> I always kind of wanted um randomizer kind of game mode, yeah. but I know how much yeah. coding that would take. 
it would be insane to even oh, develop. Uh, I think so. I think it would be like a lot of things you gotta, would have to think about, and it would probably break constantly in my head at least. But like, I'm not a, a coder by any means, mm -hmm. but. I mean, the fact that they've ran League successfully with how much they already have to change with the game and things, I mean, obviously there's always a few broken things, but most of it runs pretty smoothly. Yeah, so. it's really good content for like a month. Yeah. And then I just want to do literally anything else. Yeah, yeah. That's most people. They play for two to three weeks and they're like, okay. Yeah, I would be... I think I would be more interested if next time they do a leagues, they do like a set period. And if they want to extend leagues, just lock the high scores after like four weeks or six weeks. And if they want to have two weeks after that, where people can just go and continue playing and fucking around, do that, but just make it so that people don't feel pressured to just grind every second out for the entire thing. Yeah. 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 It's tough. It's I don't play it so I don't fully understand, but I think what they've what they've decided to do at least is what I hear this is a rumor. I don't know if they're actually doing this, but it sounds like for future leagues because of the data they have on the previous 3, they're making it so Dragon Trophy is just like a set amount instead of having to constantly check your ranks. Oh, good. It's it's just going to be like if you hit the fifty thousand point threshold, and they're only they're only able to do this now because they've done three, and they can kind of gauge like points wise, like okay, this sounds appropriate if fifty thousand points is guaranteed dragon trophy. So then you're not just yeah under this insane pressure the whole way through to keep your rank. I think that's a better way to go about it. Yeah, I I would very much like that. Just because I would feel motivated instead of completely demoralized that I'm like, oh, I have to go see family for a weekend. Well, guess my entire month is not what I wanted it to be. Yeah, some of us are insanely competitive and struggle to not do things. <laughs> so it's uh, like some people say, yeah, well, just don't play. Well, it ain't that easy when you want to win. Mm hmm. Yeah. Okay, um, I think there's a few comments that we've already sort of touched on, though. Uh, do you guys see anything? Because if not, I think we'll probably wrap things up. I have a few, I have a couple questions of my own for you guys. Um, I don't see anything. No, it looks fine. Okay, um, first I want to ask uh, each of you what your... I guess plans are for the next like up for this year and next year and what you guys uh like any goals you have for either IRL or in game or just you know streaming related or whatnot. So I'll start with you, Potato. Anything? Any goals uh, in the next couple of years? Well the goal uh for this account UIM has always been to do Inferno on it. So that's kinda what we're grinding towards. Um, while trying to enjoy the account, of course, but like the the gear choices I make are 100% towards Inferno all the time. Um, so maybe hoping to do that in a year or probably longer. It depends how spooned I get, I guess. But that's that's kind of been the goal there. Um, I've also been thinking about maybe creating a hardcore. Um, we'll see. We'll see how this account goes. As for IRL, I I really don't know. Just keep keep grinding and keep doing what i've always done hell yeah all right sid um goals probably within the next year i think in game is probably just best in slot pvm or maybe best in slot pvm minus everything from fasani's <laughs> Most of that stuff yeah. is not even best in slot anymore. But I exactly. mean, it's got yeah. its niche shoes, but yeah. Yeah. So at least get like Infernal full Torva full. I, I'm, I pretty much have max range besides Xerite Van Braces because I just need to do next. So that's what I've been working on right now is just getting Void Waker to help me with 
cutting down the grind on Fasani's and Nex and Corp. Um, so yeah, best in slot PVM is mine like next year. Hopefully maybe have like three or four crystal crowns by then. And then outside probably stream related is just get to the point where I can, I don't know how Twitch is going currently at least, but having the partner plus program exist again is at least a very, very, very small step in the right direction. So I want to work towards that just because this is my full-time job now. So I, yeah, I guess work towards that. I don't know how feasible it will be. I also don't know how Twitch is going to be in a year. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad Yeah, I saw that announcement. That seems cool. It seems like a, like a goal to work toward like something yeah. that's achievable, but you know, you're just going to have to put in the hard work and obviously it's some of it's just not up to you. Yeah. And especially old school RuneScape as like a category itself, just the overall old school RuneScape community is so generous and mm -hmm. kind Yep, on Twitch. Like it's just, it's a wonderful place to be because there's so many good people yeah and like content creators too but yeah the generosity on the osrs section is very different from most of twitch yeah it's crazy okay uh last thing is i want to ask you both for three shout outs from the community or just you know anybody uh players viewers you know so, Potato, start with you. I've actually been thinking about this. Uh, thankfully, I know, uh, I knew you were going to ask this. <laughs> because <laughs> if, if that was on the spot, I'd probably break down and cry. <laughs> but uh, I've decided to shout out my best friend, Molly Music, also a wonderful content creator. Um, I also decided to shout out uh, Tipslip, wonderful name. Uh, my, my first Twitch mod, she uh, supported me when I almost had no viewers in starting out and was just like that one voice in chat that, you know, kept it going. And then lastly, my my wonderful man, Stein, that kind of always supports me and my hobby. So, yeah, sacrificing a lot of our time to make this work. That's awesome. Sid? Oh, I don't know. I I absolutely have to say my wife because she's the person who allows me to do any part of this without her i would not be streaming i heck i might not even be alive she takes very good care of me <laughs> <laughs> um i i mean i would love to shout out my entire mod team because they're fantastic all of them are just great i said but that I'm, counts yeah as far as other like i would say if they're giving two other people specifically content creators in the space i would say hamzy and schmacko are my go-to's just because they're absolutely great i guess throw in danny on bundy too because again <laughs> absolutely great there's yeah, so many they, it's insane there's so many good people it's so hard to like narrow it down. Yeah. No, it's not I, it's not meant to be top shout outs, just yeah. shout outs that you think deserve. Yeah. I also would not be where I am without I would say Jace. Jace has been phenomenally helpful in introducing great people to my community. That's awesome to hear. Yeah. Jace is a legend. He's so oh. My love of D&B would not be nearly as uh, fleshed out if not for him. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Okay. Um, I really enjoyed this evening talking to you both. Uh, guys listening down in the description, both uh, Potato and Sid's socials, Twitch, Twitter are down in the description. Now, neither of you have a YouTube, is that correct? So I don't need to... Link I that. used to have one, but I don't post really much anymore. Just some shorts here and there. So Okay. Do you want me to link yeah. it? Ah, sure, why not? All right, perfect. Um, go go check out their uh 
pages. Be sure to follow their Twitch. And um, yeah, also down in the description, if you guys want to support the cast, uh, there is a Patreon link as well. You get your name on the title screen. Um, but yeah, Potato and Sid, thank you guys once again for coming on and talking. This is great. Any last thank words? Thank you so much for inviting us. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, that was, that was a lot of fun. I really appreciate it. All right, guys, we will catch you in the next one. Next week, we uh, it's still kind of iffy. I'm still working with a, a couple people trying to schedule stuff. Um, so I can't guarantee any guests. But next week, there will be a cast. Um, so just follow me on Twitter down below, and you guys can get first access to seeing who will be on the cast next week. But yeah, thank you guys, and we'll catch you in the next one. Peace. Thank you.